Hello, very good morning to you. Welcome to Sewing Street. A little bit of Sunday morning sewing always goes down well. Um, my name's Debbie Shaw and I'm going to be here with you live for the next four hours. We have a brand new guest coming up shortly, that's Rachel, and she's going to be making some things from my book and then there's a little bit of dressmaking later on as well. So we've a very varied kind of show. Um, right, so because you've joined us nice and early, are you, are, is everybody there, first of all? So we, should we name check, make sure that Angie? Do we have Morak? Do we have Kirsty? Do we have Leslie? Do we have Mary and Mary? Do we have Carol? Do we have the Bennetts? Do we have Alan? Do we have Lisa? Are we all, are we all there? Do, do we have Leah? Yeah? We've got Kat? Yeah? We've got Joe? Yeah, they're here. I can see them. And we've got Rachel too. Um, just sort of make sure. I don't want to start without you because it's quite regular on a Sunday morning. That's our, it's like our own little sewing club. So um, yeah, come and let me know if you're there. I'll give you the details on how to do that shortly. But for those of you who are regulars, you will know that when you come through at eight o'clock in the morning, we bring you a special offer. So today is no different. So this morning, our uh, very special offer is metallic thread. We've not done this before. Um, An early bird is a um, product that we reduce the price of for the day or for the duration that we have the stock. So basically till we sell out. You can multi-order as much as you like. And the idea is that whatever you purchase now, so this is £8.99, you'll see underneath here, it says £3.95 all day. That seems a, a rather a lot, doesn't it, Kitty? Yes, it does. Um, it seems rather a lot of postage when you're only spending £8.99, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Um, but that means that once you've got your postage out of the way, for the whole of the rest of the day, you don't pay any more postage. So if you want to come back later on and order anything from a book to a pattern to a sewing machine to a packet of needles, there's no extra postage to pay. It's like having PMP free all day. So you're saving yourself um, a little bit of money here. These are only £8.99 and Three ninety five postage, and then that's it. No more all day. So look at the colours that we've got on here. We're thinking Christmas, a little bit of glitz and glam for your free motion embroidery. I'm going to be doing some applique at um, at nine o'clock in the nine o'clock show, and I'm going to make a holly wreath, and I'm going to do some free motion embroidery with a said Gutemann thread. Gutemann are one of the biggest brands of thread um, manufacturers in the world, so you know you're investing in quality. The only thing you're going to invest in is a metallic needle, that is going to help, but I shall explain more later on. You can order more than one, if you like. We've got seven threads in here. If you know you're going to be doing a lot of snazzy embroidery coming up to Christmas time, then um, you can order a couple of those if you want. Um, there's 70 metres there in total, so that's going to last you quite a long time and you're only going to use this in your top thread, don't use it in your bobbin. So if you want to order, it's 0800 001 4433 or you can go to our website, which is sewingstreet.com. Isn't it kitty? Yes, it is. Do you know I'm going to move that because it can drive me mad all day. There you go. You go down there, kitty. Mind you get fed up with seeing that cloud as well to be. I think we need some new, some new set dressing, I think. I'll see, I'll see what I can do. Um, okay, so that is your early bird. Um, Rachel's going to be demoing from one of my books. So if you want to look, it would be helpful, wouldn't it? Here we go. This is Half Yard Heaven. This is actually the second book that I wrote quite a while ago now. Um, and it is um, the first of the Half Yard series. I think I've got nine in the series now with compilations coming up. Now we're working on more. Um, but it's basically using less than half a yard of fabric for each one of the projects. And a lot of them are a lot less than half a yard of fabric. So this is a great series of books for beginners. Half Yard Heaven is a really varied bunch of different projects from a pair of slippers to um, tote bags. There's ornaments, there's child's aprons. Um, there's a string of hearts which Rachel is going to show you how to make in just a second but easy things to make particularly for beginners um, maybe getting the kids involved in sewing or um, if you're teaching somebody how to sew these are ideal little projects and there's loads of them actually I mean I've got normally says oh I should have counted shouldn't I well I wrote the thing should know um, all of these different projects for you 26 in total there you go um, look, Sid, look, he's gone deaf. She has gone deaf now. That's the loudest meowing cat ever. So through useful things and useful stitches, as I always like to do, um, so that you can understand the techniques that have been used in the book, and then really easy projects for you to make. 
So there's nothing complicated in this book at all. It's an, it's an ideal beginner's sewing book. Or if you've just lost your sojo and you wanted some ideas, maybe gift ideas, maybe you've got lots of scrap fabrics, maybe you're buying the scrappy bags. And th these are the kind of projects that you can really use your scraps up with. Um, but I think you'll find them useful as well. So it's got glasses case. This is the one that Rachel made. She's going to show you how she did that later on. Um, there's no patterns in the back of here. There's no templates or anything. So I give you measurements. Um, so I'm not using a paint. Look at that. They, they were angels, these two. They're sisters. And um, the little one actually trapped her finger in the car door on her way in. She was so, it was so much in pain. Um, oh, we're going to do the chicken as well later on. Um, but to make her feel better, she had a plaster look. <laughs> That's sweet. They were so good. Um, so again, really easy, simple projects for you to make. 26 of those in total. And there you go. That's, a, that's an idea. There's a really varied kind of selection of, um, of projects for you to make. We bundled some fabrics together for you as well. Now you've already seen the, well you've probably seen the tea cozy, it's sat there and the chicken sat here and we've got the hearts there. And the glasses case was made out of these. So, which one do you want to have a look at first? Should we do glasses case? I've got two half metres of fabric. That's an awful lot of fabric for a glasses case. So you've got plenty left over that you could maybe make a chicken or whatever you like with. Or, I mean, we're calling it the glasses case bundle. You can make what you like with it. It doesn't know. Um, £9.49 uh, in total. And it's really pretty fabric. I mean, consider, if somebody described a fabric that said, yeah, it's got snails on it, you go, snails but it really works it's more more like a, a wildlife fabric so there's birds and snails and hedgehogs and butterflies and swirly things but it works doesn't it and it's all in a cream background so you've got a very elegant look and it goes so well with that brown spot that's a poplin spot um, and again that's nine pounds 49 pence for both of those then we have the String of Hearts bundle. It's a metre of fabric, do what you want with it. Half a metre of each of those, and that is £10.99. So we've gone, gone up markets here, a bit of Liberty going on. So this is the Liberty Chatsworth Blossom. Then we have a Chicken bundle. But again, it's a Liberty and a Poplin Spot. And that's £10.99, half a metre of each of those, are 112 centimetres wide. And then finally, you have your Tea Cozy Bundle. I wonder if we're always going to call these these names, even when these aren't on the show. Because people are going to go, why is that called a Chicken Bundle? There's no chickens on it. Liberty again, £10.99, and half a metre of each of those. Okay, have we got anybody there this morning? Oh, we've had a few, oh lovely. Um, keep your messages coming in. If you go to our um, Facebook page, um, in fact, we can give you all of the details how to get in touch. It's Sewing Street TV, I'm not on the fans page, but but Cat Producer is, so no matter where you put your messages, we're going to find you. Or you can email the studio, which is studio at sewingstreet.com. So if you want to just come and say, hello, I'm here. You forgot to give me a name check this morning, then do let me know and you'll get one. Um, or if you've got any questions, if you have comments, if you want to post pictures, it would be lovely um, to hear from you this sunny Sunday. Is it sunny? I don't know. It was dark when I came in. This Sunday morning, it'd be lovely to hear from you. Um, so really easy to get in touch. Let's give you a reminder. So it's, it's over to Vix. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. 
Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello there, welcome back again and good morning to you Rachel. Good morning Debbie. Well, welcome to Sewing Street. Oh I've been so excited about this morning. <laughs> yeah I've hardly contained myself oh. yeah, but I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so viewers that used to watch Sewing Quarter will have seen you before. Yes yeah. Um, but you're not, you're not really making, not usually making chickens. And no not as rule no mm. no but I must say I have enjoyed making this particular uh, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> my, so I, my husband did ask what it was so but that's men isn't isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a chick, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a chicken. Um, so what's your background? Right, okay, well, I've always been working in insurance. Oh, yeah, okay. commercial insurance, <laughs> funny enough. I know, I know that was a surprise to you because I didn't say that to no. you this morning. Um, but yes, I did work in insurance for over 20 odd years, actually, selling insurance, commercial insurance. So I had a little bit about me with regards to business. Um, and I've always sewn. Um, I was adopted as a child, very grateful to have been adopted into a family that um, my mother was a seamstress um, and she was an apprentice in a wedding dress, All right. uh, Yeah, the, where they used to make wedding dresses in Somerset. Um, so she was always sewing on her machine and it's one of those things as a child you just want to have a go, yeah. don't you? So um, took all the exams at school and everything. Um, and so it was always there in the back of my mind, life goes on, children and work. Um, and last year, um, I made a dress for, uh, actually it was about two years ago now, I made a dress for a, a friend's wedding and decided to post it on Sewing Quarter. It went Barmy <laughs> on the on the <laughs> face thing, yeah. <laughs> and I thought, whoa. Um, and little did I expect when I sent the picture in, up it popped on the screen. I was ironing at the time, and I nearly dropped my iron <laughs> to see me on the screen. Um, and um, so, so that happened. And then um, John Scott, that was on the program, then thought, actually, I can see something here. And it was just, he just introduced me every, every, practically every day um, and it was wonderful to be fair um, and and then what happened from that was um, I got made redundant quite a few times as some people do and you think enough's enough that's it I don't yes. want to Somebody do just computers to tell you anymore about. yes so what we decided to do is I decided to set up my own little sewing studio and um, and I've been doing bridal alterations because I have got that skill anyway, yeah. but never brought it to the fore. And then from that, my husband and I decided to go into business together. So he's a locksmith, totally com completely different to dressmaking, but we <laughs> thought might as well work together. So his half was key cutting and dry cleaning. And, um, and then I did the bridal alterations and also general alterations, oh. although I did teach Gary to do things like changing zips and all sorts of things, so he was, he's pretty handy actually. So that's what we did, and then of course unfortunately because of the pandemic that we've had, um, we, we had to close the big premises down, um, oh. Gary had to look after his father. And um, so then I've now I've got a, a smaller sewing studio, but it's a mini Magnolia. That's how people know me from here is my business Magnolia. And Magnolia came about just because my adoptive mother, before she died, um, she had this enormous great big Magnolia tree oh, outside okay. of her bungalow. So it's my little yeah. thing to my, yeah. to my mum. And every time I go into work, and I see my magnolia wallpaper, I think of my mum. Oh. And that I know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know. Story. But it, it, it is a lovely story, and it yeah. is my way of, you know, saying thank you, mum, for what you've given to me. Yeah. 
So oh, that's that's lovely. We've had yeah. loads of messages for you already this morning. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, who was that? Kat? Denise. Denise says it's lovely to see you. Oh, thank you, Denise. Um, Valerie says good morning, Debbie and Rachel. Oh. Um, she's looking forward to this morning's program. I'll keep the messages coming in. Can I say hello to Rachel as well? Oh, and, thank and you. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do today? Right. So what we're going to do today? Um, I'm going to start off with the chicken. Which is actually a little doorstop. It's really quite cute, chicken. to be fair. <laughs> um, but as with, with all of Debbie's projects in her book, they're absolutely marvellous, to be fair. And, um, and you just make up your own templates um, and then you sew them from there. So you can add little bits to them if you want to and make them your own. Um, so, and you'll see little embellishments that I've put on mine that are not exactly like Debbie's, although they are Debbie's. Um, but I just put little tweaks on them just think, to make them I think mine. It's, I, I love that chicken. It's one of my favourite things I've ever made. Yeah. But it doesn't matter if it goes a bit a bit wonky. No. It, it adds it to really, its character, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. I did have a moment, which I will tell you about. Um, but um, <laughs> but but how we how I made up the template. Um, you have a piece of card, sixteen by twelve inches. So if you imagine that square, and then. You, you cut out in the middle a little section for the, for the wings. So if you cut that out, that gives you your template for the wings. Um, and then you put a plate um, as a circle round here for its main body on the paper. And then you literally draw up. If you're not, if you're not that confident with drawing, then you can use like a, a rim of a cup or something like that just to get that curve nice. And then you just bring it up four inches from the side of the plate and then make a little point for its tail. It's really simple. So you, can't you tell us, well, these are the days before I discovered circle templates. Absolutely. <laughs> Everything's drawing around plates. Dinner plates and tea yeah. plates. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but I think it's always quite nice as well to know that you can make these, these templates out of things out of your cupboards at yeah. home. You don't necessarily, I know these proper tools, they're very handy. But if you haven't got them, then you can just grab a pot out of your, your cupboard and actually use that. So, so what we needed, um, I'd have to take my glasses off because otherwise I can't read it close up. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then you just need some red ribbon to make its tail, which I'll show you how to do in a second. Um, and I think that's called its wattle, is it, Debbie? Yes. Yeah, is wattle. Um, and also his feet which I think is really, really cute. <laughs> um, this is out of the Liberty fabric, as you've just been shown, and cut his little wings just to give a little bit of a contrast fabric. Um, and then you just make a little square as well um, to put some pellets in to weight it down because it is a doorstop. Um, and that's basically it. So then you spread your fabric out. You're down to business now. <laughs> so and my I will tell you about my little mistake because we all make mistakes just because you've been sewing for years on end doesn't mean to say you never make mistakes and I think if you've if you say you've never made a mistake then you haven't really sewn properly that's that's what I always say I'll, I'll, I'll go with you on that <laughs> yeah. one yep. yeah so and you just learn don't you so we've cut out our chicken shape so what you do next from the right side, with this spray, we have got fabric spray. Yeah. You just spray the little wing shape onto the fabric because unless you do that, it will get sucked into the machine and and it will go all over the place. So it just makes sure that it stays in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just sew round the wings for now. So this you how could be um, an opportunity to maybe do a bit of hand sewing or yep, a blanket, another blanket stitch machine or hand sewing. Actually. Yep, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah that would be nice. Um, because this is a machine I don't normally use, we're doing straight stitch this morning, okay? <laughs> yeah, for the first time on air on sewing street, yeah. and there we are with one <laughs> you, of the most you have to be a little, machines. <laughs> you have to be a little bit lenient with me this morning. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Oh. Well, while you're doing that, um, Ruth, morning Ruth. 
Ruth says she loves the thread, so I think they're going to be going into my basket. Looking forward to watching Rachel's demos. Morag, morning. Are you awake this morning, Morag? She was dropping asleep the other day. Um, morning, Debbie, ready for a good morning. Challenge, Debbie. Ooh. Oh, 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 we're going to do a challenge, Debbie. Um, could you do a triangle coin purse with a zip, please? Oh, now. The, might do a challenge, Debbie, tomorrow. Because I think we're a bit jam-packed full this morning. But I do like, I do like a challenge. Um, this is the Sewing Street Facebook page that I'm on. If you go to community, you can leave a message there. Um, morning, Dawn. Um, we've got a couple of Dawns. Morning, Debbie. What could you ask for? Sunday, sunshine, and you on the telly. Looking forward to the show. Thank you. Um, keep your messages coming through. Um, oh, Sandra. Sandra. Oh, it's a rainy day in West Cumbria. It's, it's raining in West Cumbria. Oh, no. Oh, well, Eve, well, you have to watch us then, won't you, this morning? Yeah, that's not so bad then, is no, it? No, really? stay in and watch Sewing Quarter. Sorry. Well, you could. Sewing Street, even. A year ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. Same thing, but miniature version. Exactly. <laughs> um, Gina's message. Morning, Gina. Um, oh, she's already made some of the, the products from the book. Have you? Um, what, the what's and Gina hearts? made? Did she say? Chickens and hearts. Oh, lovely. No um, pressure on me then. <laughs> <laughs> but she said they're very easy to follow instructions. They Thank are. You. Yes, they are. Now, on my on my um, projects that I did at home, my examples, I did actually use a little zigzag stitch on this. But it's up to you what you what you want to do, what effect you want to have. See what I mean about the foot going up and down. Yes. <laughs> this is the first time I've used this machine, by the way. <laughs> I was a bit frightened of it, but oh, it's, it, it it's can read your mind. This one, when you put your foot on the foot pedal, the um, the presser foot automatically lowers. But you want to do this, but it yeah. does it itself because you're so used to picking up yeah. this at the back and putting it down and altering your needle. You don't have to do that with this machine. It's it's actually brilliant. Um, so once you've sewn the wings on, you then put right side to right side. I was just thinking what lovely little Christmas gifts these would make. Oh, we could have a, a bit of glitzy embroidery oh, thread around that wing. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you'd have to... Oh, I'm going to do that. I'd have to make a Santa hat for it. Oh, yes. Chickens in Santa hats. Yes, so definitely. Definitely. So we've got right sides together. Okay, so all that we do literally is sew all the way round. Now, this is my mistake because I'm very honest. As you can see, he's got a beak there, but what I should have done was I should have cut the beak slightly bigger so that I could actually sew it and then poke it through, but I haven't made it quite big enough. So I had to do my own thing. <laughs> so I had to push his beak in so it didn't show. <laughs> so it looked like he's been stuck in lemons. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and he was a bit like... <laughs> at one time so then i luckily luckily i had <laughs> luckily i had a little bit of yellow felt left over at home just like you do so then i cut a little um little triangle out or a little diamond shape and he's got a lovely little yellow Aww. beak there you see so you could do that so i like the i like the yellow beak why didn't i do that oh. <laughs> <laughs> but i had to think quickly on my feet there so i'm just going to so round now the the chicken just all oh and what you do as well you just leave a little space you can see where it's gone flat at the bottom just leave that space in between so that you've got room to stuff him afterwards and also to put your pellets um we've got pellets on the website actually there are um recycled plastic pellets on there or you can stick a pebble in it <laughs> i was going to say you can stick a pebble in its bottom but that, that... Ooh. That didn't quite sound right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, anything heavy. Hmm. Uh, Jane's message in. Morning, Joan. Uh, says, hi, Debbie. Lovely to see you this morning. Thank you very much. Lovely to hear from you too. She says, Rachel, ra no, Rachel seems like a wonderful lady, she said. She said, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> if you knew. <laughs> well, you know, we all got dark secrets, you know. Oh, oh. But they're not coming out today, I can tell you. <laughs> so, <laughs> there we go. I'm just going to sew round the other side now. I think with the, the, 
projects as well. Yes, we've got an incredibly fancy sewing machine here. But all you need is a straight stitch. Yes, you do. And most machines will have a zigzag stitch. So, you know, if you, if, if you are new, maybe you've borrowed a machine or you've got a very old one, something that you've inherited, it's very nice to go and spend a fortune on the sewing machine, but you don't have to. And it's the same with the templates, isn't it, Rachel? If, you, if you're a beginner, like you said, you, you won't have yep. things like that. Yeah. And, you know, you'll build up your stack of, um, of tools, but to start with, don't rush out and buy all of these templates that you might not... You might not enjoy sewing, after all. I mean, I always think as well, when you're starting off sewing, you don't want it too complicated. You yeah. want a project that you can make pretty quickly. Yes. And you can see, oh, that's what I made. Yeah. Isn't it? And it's just that feeling that you've actually made something that's useful. Or that you could give us a gift. Exactly. Yeah. So my mum was an, a seamstress like yours. We, yeah. Me and my sister had to sew when we were younger. Not that that makes it sound like a chore. It wasn't. <laughs> um, but we, we didn't spend very much money on clothes or anything like that. No. So if we wanted anything fashionable, we made it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's odd, isn't it? Because we were talking about this with my eldest lad the other week. <laughs> um, when I was younger, we had a school outfit, a play outfit, and a best outfit. And you wore that best outfit from anything from Sunday school to a wedding, because you had one best outfit. We didn't go out and buy stuff every week, no. like, like people no. do now. I but mean, they I were can, made to last. I mean, I can remember going on holiday, and my mum had made me these Mickey Mouse shorts. I used to think they were wonderful. They must have looked a bit silly, but yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I threw them out last week, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the neighbours started to mention things, so <laughs> and we live in a little village, so you know you don't want that going oh, on. Oh, everybody knows now. <laughs> Rachel wears Mickey Mouse shorts. No, I don't really. Right. She does. <laughs> Got one under a dress now. I have. No, I haven't. <laughs> um, right. So when you've sewn all the way round, you'll see that you've got some curves. Okay. So when you turn the chicken in, in uh, round the right way. Unless you actually snip these curves and just snip the little top off the triangle bits, it won't turn out properly. And then you'll have some little bits of creasing. So you just snip it along the curves. Be careful not to cut the stitches. Like I, that. I do go on about scissors that are sharp to the point. But this is why you need them, isn't it? Absolutely. I did make a, a pair of laminated, like faux leather, very thick, heavy stuff it was at the time, hot pants when I was about 10 years old. Whoa! Oh, because I, I was walking like a, a stiff jaunted <laughs> doll. <laughs> Couldn't move, they, they were sweaty and chafy and everything. I loved them. <laughs> I thought I was the bee's knees in them. Well, you did, didn't you? I mean, I can remember wearing those white leather look boots that used to put in white shoes. Can you remember? <gasps> yes! An elastic, oh, it's bringing back memories now, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> See, we get on never so well, the pops, we're about the same. Well, Debbie's younger than me, I think. <laughs> Everybody's younger than me nowadays. <laughs> right, so let's turn this inside out, uh, around the right way, I should say. So now what I always do is I just push my thumb right at the end, then I just pull it out, okay, like that. And then find the tail and do exactly the same thing. Push your finger in and press it through. Now I don't know if we've got a Derek the Dobber here at all. Oh what? It used to be called Derek the Dobber. Oh. Last time I was on. But, oh I don't know. But because I was a lady I think we decided to call it Deirdre. Oh. Um, just I, a stick I, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's just we've really a stick. We've got some pencils. Yeah that'll do. But don't do this at home. Deirdre just in case Dobber. your pencil's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Sandra, morning. Um, <laughs> what do. a good way to start the day, she says. <laughs> and she loves all of the tips, any hints and tips, she loves those. Brilliant. Um, well, we all need those, don't we? Yeah. She but says some inspirational, she says. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Oh, and Pat, morning, Pat. Um, welcome to Rachel and to Sang Street, she says. And uh, we all love to watch. Oh, thank you very much, Pat. It's it's lovely to be here, honestly. Doing something that you love as well. I mean, what yeah. can be better than that? I know. You see all my writing on there. That's put that down there. Oh, so I've already read see. that. Oh, yeah. oh. It's a shopping list. Oh, <laughs> that was for Gary. <laughs> yeah. 
So once you've sewn it all the way round, you've got your shape of your chicken, as you can see. Obviously, that's its head, that's its tail. And I've left the gap in there. So what we would do now is just out of an old scrap piece of fabric, you just make a, a square. doesn't matter if it's the wrong way round or whatever, because it's going to go up inside. And what I did was I used a funnel. So I put the funnel... Gary held one side for me. He's so helpful <laughs> at home, <laughs> holding funnels and all sorts of things. So then you, you fill the little bag with pellets like that. And then, and then you just hold it closed like that. Then sew it with your machine around there so you've got the bag full of pellets. You stuff this with, with, your, um, with your filler. And then right at the bottom, you put your pellets so then it just weights it down. Okay, so it doesn't fall over. So that's basically it with the chicken. So this is one I made earlier. Blue Peter. <laughs> so, have you named it? So, have sorry. you named it? I haven't actually. No, I suppose I ought to have done really. Well, do, what any do suggestions? you think? Over to you at home. Yeah, please, what suggestions. It could be a cockerel. Doesn't have to be a hen. Could be that's that's true. Mm -hmm. It could be a man or a lady. Good chickens' names. Okay. Because we're gender fluid here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. So, <laughs> man or lady. Okay. Or both. Or both. Your choice yep. these days. Absolutely. Isn't it? Everybody's welcome. So then, what you do is that you get some red ribbon. This is for its head feathers. And what's that called again? Wattle. A wattle and his feet and its tail feathers. So you get four, um, I think it was 11 pieces of red ribbon, four inches long, okay? So you just literally just double it up like that. So for its head, you can see you've got three little layers. So you just put three pieces of ribbon together for its, for its head like that. And I found it easier just to just to sew it on afterwards, and I have a needle here ready. I think as well when you're stuffing it, stuff it a lot so it's nice and tight, because yes. then it gets its, its roundness, because there's That's no darts right. or anything in it, it's only two pieces of fabric. Just make it and it will stand up a little flat. bit better as well. Yeah. We don't want a baggy chicken. Oh, no. No. Oh. Hmm. More eggs awake. Do. Jolly good. She's on call, so she might have to pop out, but she's um, oh. no, no call outs till lunchtime, she says. Uh, morning, Claire. Uh, morning, Debbie, the crew and all at home. Um, I've ordered my early bird as I have an addiction to free motion embroidery with metallic threads. Oh, you have, haven't you? She's been sending some pictures in. Uh, I'm looking forward to what else you have on the show today. Claire sent some pictures of her shorts. They're not, they're not Mickey Mouse. Oh, did you very make nice, those? But Did she make nice. them? I don't know. We're looking at a top, I think, but they're very oh. nice shorts as well. Um, Lisa's messaged in. Is that our Lisa in Timmouth? Oh, you're in Eccles Hall. New Lisa or a different Lisa. Okay. Hi, Lisa. Love waking up to me and the guests. So even bliss, she said. It is, oh. isn't it? So if you've got Debbie on here with you, see, it really is bliss. Because <laughs> De Debbie does all the talking, you see. <laughs> do a lot of talking. I do so much talking. My, my sewing's normally wonky on sewing street. So there's a, a lot of unpicking goes on. Um, Lisa's going to have a go at making the chicken. So, brilliant. Can they send pictures in here as well after yes. they've made them? Because that would be Facebook lovely. Or or emails, if you, if you prefer. If you don't do Facebook, it's studio at sewingstreet.com. Uh, down there. Oh, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Oh. So I've just sewn his wattle I'm arguing. on. I'm, I talk to myself a lot, but I'm arguing with <laughs> oh, myself I now. Oh, I do that as well. Do you? Oh, all the time. <laughs> Gary thinks I'm telling him off, but I'm not. I'm just tell telling myself off. <laughs> <laughs> so, really, that's that's that was just to show you, really. Yeah. Obviously, that you can just hand sew that, that on. Or, if you're really clever, um, you can actually include that in the seam so you can't see any stitching it's just totally up to you all right that's probably the easier way isn't it to put it that way personally yes yeah, yeah. well so, then do next then right my next project 
for my next act, <laughs> I've got, we're going to do some hearts. Lovely. So these have been deliberately not finished, so I can just show you how to finish them off, okay? Really, really pretty. So you can use those like a nice little wall hanging. And again, they make a nice gift. Absolutely. And also what I th what it actually does say this in your book is if you fill it with pomanda or oh, did I say lavender. That? Yes, I'm sure I didn't dream that. I wrote it oh, a while been, ago. Yeah, we've been dreaming, haven't we, this morning? Yes. Oh, the ridiculous. Go on then. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, what's your dream? Is it clean? Oh, I've got, yeah, oh, absolutely, yes. Okay. I don't, don't have anything. Mind you, it's Sunday morning. Yeah. We, we can get away with anything yeah. on a Sunday morning. <laughs> no management team, we do what we want. Well, if you remember, I told you that we had premises where Gary worked with me and he did the key cutting and the dry... Well, we, we didn't actually do dry cleaning. We, we collected the dry cleaning and sent it off to be dry cleaned. And this lovely lady came in to have this dress dry cleaned. And it was absolutely stunning. I've never seen a colour like it. It was absolutely stunning, this dress. And after she left it with us and we'd done all the paperwork... This, this is the dream, isn't it? No, this, this is, is this a, is the oh, actual okay, truth. Right, she right. brought it in. So, and I was looking at this dress and I thought, oh, this is absolutely gorgeous. I'd love a dress out of that colour. So anyway, the lady went. So at night, I must have been thinking about this. And I, this is my dream. I dreamt I went to a party and I was wearing this lady's dress. <laughs> I borrowed it off of... <laughs> Off of the that hanger. is the dream, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, no, you didn't. No, really... no, no. Oh, oh no, no, no. I wouldn't have done. <laughs> and I dreamt I was wearing this beautiful dress and sort of so proud. And then I, then I was thinking, oh, I hope this lady's not here. She can't see me wearing her dress. <laughs> and that really was a dream. It was quite funny. They I say dreams was... are based on reality, huh? Mm. <laughs> I definitely didn't wear the lady's <laughs> dress. I think she was about size six. And <laughs> as you can see, well, you can see with me turned sideways, <laughs> but not with me turned this way. <laughs> so, right, back to, back to work, right, with these hearts. <clears throat> and again, Debbie's very, very clear in her book as to how you make up the templates. And I'll show you how I made them, again, from my kitchen cupboards. You have a 12-inch square... And then you, I used the top of a whitening washing powder. You know this stuff, white stuff you put in with your powder, and it fizzes and it makes it all lovely and white. And um, you Gary's, don't have to rush out and buy one of those. No, by the way. No. Cause... Oh no, 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 no. It just was hanging around. So then I used that to make the circles. You fold the paper over. You then put your circle on there. Draw round it. You draw a straight line right down to the point at the bottom and then open it out, cut it out, and there's your heart. Clever, isn't it? It's easy, isn't it? Your Very heart, heart easy. What so an easy idea. Quite difficult to, to draw. Yeah. And it just means you can make any shape. So if you if you had the point um, higher Slightly up, you'd have a fat heart. Yep. Or you can make those really long Scandinavian yep. type Yeah, of exactly. So that's the 12 inch square and I was thinking of like wedding cakes and things like that and how the tiers are worked out. So I thought we've got a 12 inch square there so I'll go down to a 10 inch square. So I used a mug rim to draw the circle around there. <laughs> My mug's now got a pencil mark all the way around. No, it hasn't. <laughs> it has been washed. <laughs> and then for the third one, we go down to an 8 inch square and that was the inch tape. Uh, sorry, the inside of parcel tape, you know, the brown parcel tape. So I just drew around the inside of that one. And then this one, six inch square, and I drew round a gravy lid, you know, like the gravy granule things that you have. And that was what made that, that heart. It's just to show people that just the simplest of things, really. So you all think I'm mad, I know. <laughs> but we get to the same end result, don't we? So, with our biggest heart, okay, we just put right sides together, as you do with all four. And the Liberty fabric again. The Liberty fabric Posh again. This is, this is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So, um, I'll just show, so around the smaller of the two, just because it's just a little bit quicker. And also with these, you just leave a, 
a hole in the side again so that you can stuff it and again you need to stuff these quite firmly so to give it the plump shape of the heart okay so I'm just going to sew round here leaving the gap so if you're not too confident with your um, your hand sewing um, we were chatting earlier weren't we I think now because this is only my second book I would have put the seam down the back of the heart yes so that the hand stitch is, stitching is actually on the back not on the side yeah. of the heart and it actually makes it a little bit better because just in case yeah. your, your stitching's a little bit rough on the side. You live and learn, don't you? Oh, absolutely you do. Morning, Bernadette. Good morning, Sewing Street. She said, lovely show. And Debbie and Rachel, great seeing them. Thank you very much. Um, oh, Carol. Morning, Carol. Says, morning, Debbie and Rachel. Loving the demo. Derek the Dobber was very similar to a sprittle. A, a traditional porridge stirrer. Oh. Is it? Oh, I didn't know that. You learn, you learn oh. so much on this part. There's nothing to, things that have nothing to do with sewing. Oh, yeah, so is well, it yeah. like a wooden one then? Like a wooden spoon or something like that? Oh, I don't know. Have you got pictures? <laughs> I'm going to Google it in yeah. a minute. Um, Morag says Betty the chicken and her husband, hubby says Charlie the chicken. Oh, they're nice names. Yeah. Well, we've got Gertrude the chicken. Where did that come from, Kat? Or Daphne the chicken. Daphne the chicken. Oh, Linda's messaged in as well. Morning, Linda. Loving the show she is. <laughs> she needs a family of chicken doorstops. Uh, well, you could. Different sizes, couldn't you? I, do you know, I was just going to see. See? Ooh. True professional, see? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a brilliant idea. Oh, she also says, oh, she had hot pants <gasps> and the long white boots. Hot pants and long white boots. I'm, th I'm thinking go-go dancers. They were a little bit like mm. that, actually, weren't they? Mm. And I used to wear mine because I was only about, probably about eight or nine or maybe 11 or something like that. And... Um, my nana, she'd um, she'd actually made me a dress, a knitted dress, oh. which wouldn't oh. be too cool these days. But yeah. in those days, it was actually quite. And I used to be very proud of this dress because my nana had knitted it for me, and I used to wear. And it was blue, like blue fleck, and um, sounds awful, doesn't it? Yeah. And then I used to wear that with my blue, with my white <laughs> go-go boots. <laughs> You know the little bits that used to fit in your white in your yeah, white shoes. I know. They're very plasticky you know, I, I and wish, horrible. Um, taking pictures back in those days was a really expensive business. Oh yeah. I, I wish we had the technology that you have now, where you can just snap away on your phone and it doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. Have they got any pictures of when we were younger? No. Do you know I haven't? I mm. I mean I've got a few when we went on holiday. Yeah. That was the only time the camera got the box brownie came out. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> I came from quite a big family anyway, because mum and dad were foster parents anyway. All right. um, and so we always used to have um, one tent for the girls, one tent for the boys. And we always used to cram into this Stormobile. And so when we arrived, we must have looked like gypsies or something. <laughs> but um, very happy gypsies, I have to say. <laughs> and, um, and so when we used to arrive on site, the doors used to open at the back and all these kids, hey, like this, <laughs> straight up to the park. You know? <laughs> With their hot pants and their white boots on. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I actually won a, a competition playing my recorder, you know, one year. Oh. I did, yeah. I wore, I wore, I actually won some, like some little plastic. They were awful, really, but they were <laughs> like little plastic um, deer or fawn or something. There was a mummy one and two baby ones on these plasticky, goldy chains. But I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was gold. I, I used to play. You don't know this. I used to play in the Five Side Ladies football team when I was younger. Oh wow! Um, and we won. Uh, we won a league. And we all won a pair of frilly knickers. <laughs> isn't that that's wrong, isn't it? That's really sexist. Actually, you wouldn't do that with a with a men's football. Actually, team, that you? that would be so wrong nowadays, yeah. wouldn't it? You'd yeah. really be had up for they that. They were Janet Rager. They were very nice frilly knickers, <laughs> but even so. But was it men that bought them for oh, you? Oh yeah. So it was what <laughs> they would want you to see to, to see you in, probably. 
Anyway, we haven't said that. We haven't said that on the show. No, no, no. Right. Sunday, it's okay. We, we yeah. can do what we want on a Sunday. <laughs> so that's one of the hearts, as you can see. So that's really, really pretty. But don't do like I've just done and not pull that out because you need to push it up so you get the nice point. So once you've done that, all four, it's then joining them together. So what, um, as per Debbie's book, we've tried to keep it to Debbie's book as much as possible because it is a, a good book. So you put a little pink bow on the top of the bigger one. And I, I liked what Debbie did actually and have two layers of buttons and it really shows through. Just right in the point. And then what you do is that you get the point of one of the hearts and you literally sew the bottom of it like that just in the tip there so that it just hangs nicely and then sew your buttons on for an embellishment and I think that's beautiful. Thank you. I really enjoyed making that Debbie. Thank you. Do you know we've only got about 10 minutes left. Oh my goodness. I know. So you've, you've got, got two, two, two more complete projects to sew in 10 minutes. <laughs> We worry. better get on, haven't we? <laughs> we better get on. I'm not flustered at all. <laughs> right, okay. So what we'll do next, is this right to do the glass case Which next? Which one would you prefer? The... Let's do the glass. Let's do the teapot. Cosy. Cosy. Okay. Yeah. Because it's because <laughs> it's it's quicker, but um, but this is just as nice. It's so easy to make. But I did make my own little bias binding, as you can see, just to show you quickly. So that it's got the same as the inside, and just a little rib ribbon embellishment. And you just literally sew at four sides, make your own bias binding, sew all the way round with a bit of wadding in, and your spray just to hold the wad wadding, and then put the bow on. Sew a button on. I actually sewed the button on first, actually, so I could position the ribbon. And then just a little bit of spare ribbon I had at home. And there I you go. I love those colours as well. I think they're beautiful. They're really classy, Don't aren't you? They? Yeah. I was yeah. thinking as well what we've all got to wear now. Mm. Like that. that well, yeah, nice. We've got loads left over. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, when you think, what do we do with our things when we, when we finish them? Probably goes into the bottom of our handbags. Yeah. In with all the lipstick tops that come off, and so you get lipstick all over You've been it. In my handbag, <laughs> I, that's what Gary's handbag's like. <laughs> anyway, um, so <laughs> Gary's actually here, but we don't have TVs for him to watch. So no. he's, oh, is he watching? He can't yeah, be watching. He was on the show last time. Was he? Well, John John Scott brought him on the stage, so he was interviewing Gary. He said, "Right, that's enough. Now off you go," and he pushed him <laughs> off the stage. <laughs> My grandson loves that. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so that's all you have to do. Really, really simple project as well. All right, just mm -hmm. to show you that one. With the tea cosy. So gone into the cellar. Uh, morning, Carol. She said, um, she, said she, has been, she has been watching since eight, but she's only just checking it. I like to do a register on a Sunday morning. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because there, there, there are some latecomers that we have to wait for. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I did know you were there. So with the tea cosy, um, that is actually taken from Debbie's book as well, but on another project of a little um, girl's hair band. Um, but the tea cosy is just so simple to make. OK, again, you have your, your square template, you have a dinner plate, and then you just move the dinner, dinner plate curve onto each corner and draw round it, which gives you the, the tea cosy shape, okay? Um, so then what you have to do is you have to use the spray stick, and again, for the same reason, so it just doesn't move about. How long have we got, Debbie? I'm wondering, oh. So I've just got a, a picture of a spurtle. Um, I was just wondering if we have... <laughs> really? Oh, no, yes. <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. Oh. Um, I wonder if we've got any thermalam on the website still, because that would be nice inside a, a tea cosy, Definitely. wouldn't it? There you go. A spurtle. A spurtle. Oh. I, I, want, a, I want a spurtle now. It, it looks like one of those things that you, that's got like the pipette things on the top. That yes. You, you know, does, that you baste your chicken with. <laughs> you could use one of those. You could. Thanks, Carol. I've never heard of one of those before. That's no, amazing. I haven't. A spurkle. 
Oh, Bernadette says she used to wear hot pants and miniskirts. Skirts, maximum length, 12 inches. Otherwise, they were too long. I can remember I, at school. Yeah. They used to come around with a tape measure and measure above your knee. And if it was more than, I think it was six inches above the knee. Yeah. So we used to pull our skirts down to our hips. Yes. <laughs> and then pull them up again in the classroom. Yeah. <laughs> we should do some sewing, really, shouldn't we? I think I think we should chat. a little bit. But um, <gasps> just to show you quickly, because they're such simple little projects as well, um, is that obviously you've got your wadding, so use your spray, okay? And it's very important, you only use your spray on the main fabric, okay? That you then have to put your wadding on the top. So we just pretend we've got the spray on. Like that. Oh, the white shorts, by the way. Claire did make the shorts as well, well as the top. Well, they looked really professional. And we've had another picture of a, a, a porridge stirrer from Kathleen. Thank you for that. Wow. Didn't know there was a thing. I didn't. Because I use a spoon. Yes, I do as well. But we're just, we're just out of touch, right? No, I know. Just, just, Things, need, all these gadgets. Sparkle. I suppose yeah. we go back to how our mums used to do it. Mm. Do you think? Yeah, yeah. Right, so you've got right side to right side, wadding already stuck on there. Okay, so you sew all the way round there. Oh no, sorry, you know you don't. You have one side. That's because I'm just thinking of a squirtle now, or <laughs> whatever it is called. So, <laughs> so then you. This is your lining. So then you put your lining on the top. So then. Have I got time just to sew, sew it quickly down? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we've got five just minutes. Just to show to you what it looks like. So we just put that in there. <laughs> the chicken's about to faint. Oh, oh, it's, it's a bit on. on, a bit on the wonk. <laughs> I think it's about to lay an egg actually. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Do you mind just putting the chicken around the back of the machine so we can see oh, what you're doing? Oh, yes, of course. It's yes, sorry. stealing the show. Sorry. It'd be funny if it, there was an egg on the table, wouldn't there, after that? <laughs> we used to right. keep chickens. We had chickens <laughs> even when I was a child. We had an Ethel and a Bertha um, and a Frieda. And then more recently, I named all my chickens after jewels. So I had oh. diamond and sapphire and... Oh, how lovely. Oh, they were the posh chickens. <laughs> <laughs> did they lay a golden egg? They didn't lay a golden egg, but they did amazing garlic eggs. Feed them garlic bread the day before you get garlic flavoured well, I suppose eggs whatever you feed them, mm. they, it tastes like yeah. it. I wonder if you fed them whiskey. No, 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 don't, no, no, don't, Rachel, no, don't, no. That's not a very good idea. <laughs> Bit of avocado. Yeah. <laughs> you could have your own instant eggnog. You could. <laughs> so as you can see here, do we have an iron at all, Deb? We do. It's on the shelf. Oh. It's probably not plugged in then. Oh, we won't You'll do that for the moment then. The cellar again to do. Yeah. So what we do is that once you've got this oval shape here, okay. It's avocado, not avocado, isn't it, Wally? <laughs> I'm talking to myself there. You then press it so it's, you've got a really nice seam going down the middle. And you've done the same with the other side. So you just look, you look, put right sides together. You stitch all the way round, apart from a, a space at the bottom. You turn it inside out. And then you just literally, as you can see, they might have sewn it up to there. The little space that you've got at the bottom, you just sew it across. And then you just stuff it inside. Like that. Give it a good press, and then you can put whatever embellishment you want on there. I think in the book you've got like a heart with some buttons on. Um, and then you can put like a little holder on there as well for your hook. And there's your tea cosy. And yeah, that's, it's an easy project. It's a very quick project as well. I think it's gorgeous. Um, so if you're making things as gifts, if you've got a lot of things to make, if you're making to sell, then 
Speed of is, is of the essence because we don't tend to charge for our time, do we? No, no, that's things. that that's the only problem, isn't it? Yeah. When you sort of make things for people, people think, oh yeah, can you just run that up for me? And it <laughs> takes you five hours, and yeah. then you charge twenty p for it, you know. <laughs> So, um, not quite that. Well, time. we're going to see you again at 10 o'clock. Yes. We're going to do a bit of dressmaking. You may have seen the top behind us already. So, that's a, a new look pattern that Rachel is going to show us then. Meanwhile, if there's anything that you've seen that you'd like to order, there are a couple of ways to do that. So, here's Vix to tell you how. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Dawn's messaged in and she says, uh, what a breath of fresh air Rachel is. Did you hear that, Rachel? You're a breath of fresh air. Um, you go so well together. A pair of naughty schoolgirls. Don't know what you're talking about, but we are in detention after the show. We used, we used to have detention at school. Um, the boys was a cane um, and the girls had to write, they give you a graph paper with millimetre squares on it and you had to do a circle and a dot. So you couldn't just do that, and he's had to sit there for hours, circle, dot, circle, dot. That was our punishment. I wish I was a boy, at least the cane was over with quickly. Can you imagine these days? Half Yard Heaven is the, is my, the second book. It's the first in the um, Half Yard series that I wrote, and this is what the projects that Rachel was making came from. So I've got 26 projects in total, all using less than half a yard of fabric. Um, initially, it wasn't going to be called, well, I came up with an idea for the book and I was going to call it less than half a metre, less than half a day. And I just, no, 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 we're going to sell this in the States and they don't know what a metre is. So that's where Half Yard Heaven came from. There you go. One of these days, because I don't think there's going to be any more Half Yard books apart from the compilations we're looking at, I thought about doing Half Yard Hell just full of things that went horribly wrong. I think it'd be a bestseller, along with Fifty Shades of Grey fabric. I'll do it one day. So this is a, it's not particular themed, it's just easy projects. So anything from the, the neck cushion to the string of hearts. I started making the owl up and I thought, actually it looks more like a cat. So I made a cat out of it as well. Um, and just like with the chicken that you saw that Rachel was demonstrating, I'm just using household items to make templates with. So there's no patterns, there's nothing to trace off, there's nothing to enlarge by 200%. And it doesn't matter with any of these if they don't go completely according to the sizes that I gave you, because they're very versatile. Um, I think you can make yourself a pair of slippers. Those have been really popular, actually. They're very easy to do. And your template there is your foot. So that couldn't be easier. Now we have put together some bundles for you. Um, have a look on the website there. They're, they are bundles, but they're basically two half meters of fabric. So if you just love the fabric, then you can just order those. But have a look at sewingstreet.com if you want to go for those. Um, Rachel was using 505 spray. I use loads of this, honestly. Um, if, you, if you want a fusible fleece or a fusible wadding and you don't have one, then you can make it fusible with a 505 spray. This is a repositionable adhesive, so it's a little bit like a spray pins. Um, it's not permanent, you can peel things away, you can put them back down again. The stickiness will last for around about three or four hours and any residue will wash out as well. So it's perfect for applique um, and it's perfect again if you wanted to just hold things together. It's like a, well they call it a basting spray in the States. Um, that's 
only £7.99. I mentioned Thermalam as well, so if you're making the oven gloves or even the slippers actually, that'd be cosy, wouldn't it? Or the tea cosy, this is a thermal wadding and it's £5.99. It's almost a metre square, so you, you get loads of it, but it's not the silvery one. It feels like um, like fusible fleece. Um, so that's that's your Thermalam. Um, Oliver's emailed in, morning, with a picture of his Oh, look at those. He's got a family of chicks. Oh, they're amazing. Oh, I've, I've got a couple of them. I want, to make, I want to make more chicks now. You've got me all going on chicks. Have you got names for them, Oliver? Got to have names, haven't you? Oh, um, Hetty. Hetty the Hen. That's my great niece's name. It's a lovely name, Hetty. Hetty the Hen. Kind of like that one. OK, right. We'll take a quick break. We're going to, to have a look at applique in the next hour and I'm going to be doing some free motion embroidery. Oh, I need the free motion embroidery foot, don't I? So well prepped. Um, I shall see you again in a couple of minutes time. We're talking applique. Appli I'll see you in a bit. Can't talk. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Rosie Wells. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits, feeling good, it's about looking great, making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside, and it's about the life that you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. <laughs> My baby piece of kiss with the sewing is the same with that. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in school. My claim to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show! Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Christmas is going to be here before we know it and as with every year we want to make sure that we get our makes ready in time for gifting on the big day or for decorations in the lead up. We're here to help with our Christmas make shows starting with our three day event on Friday the 31st of July until Sunday the 2nd of August and we'll be live for five hours each day too. Expect lots of festival quilting, FPP, dressmaking and needle felting to make all your decorations, advent calendars, cushion covers and so much more. We'll have our expert tutorials from some of our favourite guest designers and a fabulous competition exclusively for our Sewing Street family. 
Keep your eyes peeled on our email newsletter, Facebook and Instagram for more details in the run-up. And don't forget to tune in from 8am to 1pm on Friday the 31st of July until Sunday the 2nd of August on Freeview Channel 74, Sky 670 or on our YouTube channel. Hello there, welcome back again. Um, in this hour we're going to be looking at applique and some bits and bobs that are going to make your life a little bit easier um, when you are applying decorations and embellishments to your projects. Um, have a look on the website if you want to get ahead of the game because we've got the heat and bond, we've got the um, uh, freezer paper, there's lots of fab fabric bundles and there's some applique kits as well and what you will find there are your applique scissors. We sell out of these so many times. Um, sometimes called duck build. And the reason being is that one of the blades has this large um, kind of semicircular affair going on. But this means that when you're, I'll use them later on when I've actually cut out some applique. You can cut very close to your stitches. Um, so if you've, if you've over sewn something, under sewn something, you've got a, a bit of applique fabric sticking out, you can push this right up against the, the uh, stitches and cut the extra fabric off without cutting through your fabric um, or your stitches. The handles are bent, so they're more than just for applique, these ones. If you're cutting something like the trim on a, um, on a chair that you're covering or a stool that you're covering, it's very difficult to get a pair of scissors to cut flat because when you open them, look, they're going to do this. Um, so you're not going, you can't kind of cut flat with them if you get one. If, if I'm cutting something that's flat against here, I can't get close enough to actually make a really good cut. But with your applique scissors, you can, so they'll cut flat. So therefore, you can trim away without your hands getting in the way. So instead of doing that and your scissors are jumping up and down, so you're not actually cutting very close to the surface at all, these you're cutting with a kind of sideways motion, so you're cutting this way instead of that way, and it just means that you can get really close to them. And they are incredibly sharp. So although you've got this funny looking blade here, they, they are, they're sharp to the point, I know I'm saying it again. Um, but you'll find those really, really useful. And again, not just for applique. So if you've seen them before and you've missed out before, they're £16.99 and, and I would suggest that you get on the phones or the website and you order those as quickly as you can while we have the stock for you. Re really useful scissors. There's lots of fancy scissors around, um, but I tend to go your necessities, your dressmaking shears, your paper scissors, and a small pair of scissors. Then I'd go pinking shears and then I'd go applique scissors before I'd go on to sprung scissors or fancy scissors or anything else. Don't me. So that's those. Um, brand new for you today. It's not Christmas yet, is it? Is it Christmas next week? Next weekend's Christmas. Oh, I've been quilting for you and everything. Um, this is a template. So brand new, let's open it up. I do, I like a plastic template because they're white clean, they're sheer, you can fussy cut with them. They are multi-purpose, so you can make more than just the wreath that this has been designed to make. And they're not expensive. This is £3.49. You don't need a die cutting machine to use it, obviously. It's that. Now £3.49 is actually less than your postage for this one. So I'm hoping that you've placed an order already and then you won't pay postage for this. Um, but you can just about make out here, you've got your holly leaf and then there's the bow, there's the berries, there's the bit that goes underneath the bow which is this oval shape here and then there are two tails to go on the bottom. So I'm going to start making up the wreath using my Christmas fabrics. And we'll see how far we get, because I don't think I'm going to make a wreath. What should she put on the back of there? Let's have a look. I say she, could be a he. Uh, I've, used to, I've used web to the wrong side of the front. Okay, and that's that, the template over, completed wreath. It doesn't tell you how to make it. Um, so if I was making a wreath, I personally would go for one of those um, uh, metal wreaths, the wire wreaths that you get in a florist with two bands going around it. I would wrap some fabric around there and leave the edges loose so it frays a little bit which is a nice look and then I would hot glue the finished leaves all over the top of that is what I would do if I was making a wreath but I'm not. I'm going to put it on a gift bag and if it works we'll give it away next weekend. If it doesn't you'll never see it again. It's what happens. So that's that. Don't hold it on its own though because it's, you know, 
get the flat quarters to go with it. These are 100% cotton, brand new for you today, and we have put together Christmassy colours. So there's the dark red and the bright red and your holly colours or ivy colours. That's pretty. And then that's lovely olive. She always was lovely. Greys, beige and white. So there's eight of those in total for £12.99, which is such a good price. So I'll need the red for the berries and I'll need two greens for the holly. And we'll do the bow in red as well as on the picture. So I shall make the bag in white. So I'm only going to use four of those fat quarters. So let's... Um, Am I getting on with this now or should I show you some more things we've got on the show? I'm just kind of, it's just like I'm at home, only with a bit more talking. Right, so let's see how this, mm, that's going to make quite a small bag. That's all right, I can make a small decoration. Oh no, bigger that way, we'll do that. I might put some fusible fleece on the back of this actually, if we've got any H640. It's a bit thin. Oh, I'm out of water as well. Right, I always like to iron any fabrics I'm using before I start using them because I don't like working with creased fabric, personally. Oh no, I thought I got a mucky iron. So I've got a mucky iron at home and I cannot for the life of me remember what the tip was that Adele gave us when she was in about cleaning the bottom of your iron. Um, Let's have a couple of the greens as well. Ah, that's what I want. I knew there was best press around somewhere. Makes the job quicker when I haven't got any water in the iron. Um, just take those creases away. Don't need very much of this. Don't have best press in stock at the moment, I'm hearing. Um, Right, we'll have a darker one as well. Then I'm going to put some five oak. No, no, I'm not. I'm going to put some bonder web on the back of these. If I was making the wreath, then I wouldn't, but I may put some kind of stabilizer on the back. Because otherwise you'd have floppy holly leaves. And but because this is going to be a plique, not the actual wreath, then I think we're going to be okay just with bonder web. And that goes there. Like so. That will do. Then, well, we only need a little bit, actually. What have I done with my template? Every time. There it is. I put it down. It's normally scissors I lose. Then, let's do this. And... Bond away. So again, I only need a little bit, so just enough to make the bow. So I'm probably going to be enough with whoops with that one. And it's easier to put this on before you start cutting out your fabric pieces. And I've got a pen. I'm using a friction pen, so I've got to wait for that to cool off a little bit. <laughs> and then we're going to draw on here. You could use even a biro for this because you're not going to see it. Is that stuck? So I'll need two of those in opposite directions. And we'll have a few berries as well. Might add more to this later on. And then we need a couple of these tails. Trying to make the most of this. Should have mirror image that really, shouldn't I? And then we'll have a couple of these. I'll turn that over. And that's that. 
So let's cut these out. And then I'll need loads of berries. So let's take my time with the gyro cutter this time because this is quite nice for cutting around in circles. So let's go around here. You're basically pointing at where you want to cut with this. And it kind of swivels as well, so you can cut around curves very easily. Whoops. And it's very sharp as well. So right like a pen cuts like a knife. Let's, oops. Turn around. Come on. Have a practice with this when you get it home. So don't go straight into your chosen fabric. It takes a bit of getting used to. So that's that. I'm just going to snip that there. Or you could use your replique scissors because these are really nice and sharp as well. If you find it easier to cut with scissors, then that's fine. So I think with your stylus there, the very intricate shapes is perfect. So that's my tail, that's that bit. Oops, I'm going to need some more berries, so I don't want to waste too much of the paper there. And I would use heat and bond for something like this rather than your 505 spray, because um, it's going to have a much more secure hold as you're sewing, and these are quite intricate shapes. So I'll tell you what I shall do. If I mark out what I'm going to do on the white, and then we'll pop this on. I'll put some holly leaves behind it. And then we'll see how far we go. Because I want to show you that metallic thread as well, the early bird. And have a go with that. So I think we've got three days of Christmas next week, I think, isn't it? Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I shall be with you on the Sunday. Um, with a quilt panel. Which is really simple to make. Not my design, I just made the quilt. So I'll have those and a few berries, then we'll do some green. So have you started doing anything for Christmas yet? Do you have lots of things to do? I, we don't have very many now, it's only the kids. Mind you, I'll have a new one by then. Grandson's arriving in um, November. <laughs> they've come up with a few names, but I'm not going to say until, he's, until they've made their mind up. All right, and here we go. Certainly you're going to need your heat and bob with that one. Oh, it was paracetamols, wasn't it? Thank you. I was thinking yesterday, was it bicarbonate soda? No, it was I just couldn't remember what it was. But paracetamol for cleaning irons. Thank you. I should be doing that later. The paracetamol... Uh, the big tablets apparently just rub it over the iron so that the very powdery ones going to try that oh oh what are we doing never iron on your ironing mat <laughs> all right so it doesn't doesn't really matter with um with all of the uh, the tools and everything that we have here now because we'll be in our new studio before long so we'll have uh, new tables and new ironing mats and new irons and a gymnasium yeah so it's actually new studio update um, it is coming on very nicely I think the planetarium is in there now um, the sauna's in, the gym's there, um, the stables are already there. My helipad um, has been built now, so at least, at least I've got somewhere to park um, in the mornings. And um, yeah, I think they, we're just waiting for the, um, the beauty therapist to come in and when we're allowed to do massages and everything now. Um, we do really have two kitchens, apparently. I don't know why we need two kitchens in a sewing room. But... So, of course, we're training the chefs at the moment so that they can meet our dietary requirements. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to do these a little bit quicker. 
So we'll have, so I'm just going to change my pen because that is far too warm to use a friction pen. And I can't see that one. We'll get, we'll get there. Let's try this one. That'll do. Still can't see it very well. So we'll have one that way, one that way. And I'm cutting through both layers, so I'm cutting up four leaves at a time. Could have done eight actually, couldn't I? There we go. And holly's all year, we've got a, a huge holly, we did have a huge holly tree in our garden when we first moved in. Um, it was actually three holly trees all growing together, it was massive. So it wasn't a holly bush, proper holly full-size trees. And my son at the time, being a tree surgeon, we asked him to come around and give them a bit of a chop. Well, we asked him to dig them up, actually. Um, so he came to stay for a few days while we went on holiday and uh, left him to, to dig these trees up. Anyway, he couldn't do it. The, the roots were too deep and it would have meant half the lawn disappearing as well. So he cut them back and then the, tree, the three stumps that were left, um, he carved into toadstools. So there, there's a bunch of toadstools about this big, all different heights. And he carved them with um, a chainsaw. So we, we had builders in at the time as well. And they were saying he, he looked like um, Edward Scissorhands when he does that ice sculpture, but just with his, his, um, his saw and bark flying everywhere. We've got a very talented family, you know. Anyway, that was by the by. So we do go, we do go off piece a little bit on a Sunday morning, but okay, there we go, right there. <laughs> yeah, I've dug up the neighbour's roses by mistake before now. I don't, don't ask how he can accidentally do that, but yeah, I did that. All right. I went through a phase of wanting to grow veg. My, my dad always grew veg and I wish I, wish I would have taken more notice. Um, so we, we built this raised bed, bought all of these veg. How do you know when they're ready? I've got carrots and onions and I, how, do you know? how do you know when they're ripe if you can't see them? Um, anyway, that's by the by. Let's start on here. Now, they could have done with some stabiliser on the back of this, but just bear with me a sec. There we go. We'll do a bit of tear away on the back of that just to make it a bit more stable while I'm sewing. Mucky marks in here. Look at us. Um, so I'll put some 505 just on the back of this to hold it in place. That's tear away, so obviously it'll come away after I've finished embroidering it. And we'll have some holly leaves down first. Actually, this is quite nice with this mat because I can see through the fabric and it shows the shape of the circle. So if I did want to make a wreath, it's perfect. Let's scratch away the back of this. Like so. And I need to put these down kind of one at a time. So you layer them. So I, I could do I could do a couple at a time as long as they don't overlap because I don't want the stitches to overlap on them. And so a green, have we got a green? We have got a green metallic thread. So let's have a darker one there as well. Just for now. So I'll iron these down. And then we'll get sewing. Right. So I'm going to have lots of holly leaves and then the bow right on the front. So they can go quite high up then. So let's iron those in place. That'll do. And then we'll change the foot on the sewing machine and we'll put this metallic thread in. So regular thread on, or bobbin thread, whatever you're using on the bottom of your machine. So don't use your metallic on the bottom. I'm going to put the free motion embroidery foot on there. And I'm going to change the needle for a metallic needle. 
So some tips for you with sewing with metallic thread. It has got metal in it. So therefore, when you're sewing, it's going to heat up. Um, and when it heats up, it's going to become brittle. So sew slowly. Um, you'll need, or you'll find it beneficial to have a metallic thread needle, a metallic needle, because the inside of the eye the eye is slightly larger than your universal needle, but the inside of the eye, some of those are actually coated, um, which allows the metallic thread to slip through without causing too much friction. What you'll also see, because you can't always see this on needles, there's a groove at the back of your needle. I don't know if you, you can actually pick that up. It is quite noticeable on these. If you, We don't sell them, which is a shame. Um, but there's a groove on the back of the needle that allows the thread to pass through. That's the same on any needle. They're, they're all made the same way. So basically you don't have the needle and the thread going into your fabric side by side. They go in together. So I don't know if you can see that. There you go. So there's that little groove down the side. And it's noticeable on metallic needles and on top stitch needles because um, it's thicker, so it allows the thread to be part of the needle. So as it's going in, if you think you've got, your, if that's your needle, and then your thread comes down and out that way, if the thread was to go through at the same time as the needle, you're going to have quite a lot, you're going to have quite a big hole. But that uh, kind of groove down the back means that they become one and they're going together. So you've got a wider area there on metallic needles to help the thread flow through. The, fr the thread... Fr I really can't talk sometimes. Yeah, I was in on Thursday this week, and I don't know why. I, just, I, I still don't know why, but it threw me a bit. So it doesn't feel like a Sunday today. All right, so let's tighten that up. That's my metallic needle gone in. So just the same as any other needle. So let's take the thread out here. And always do a little test first of all as well. So it's gutterman thread, so you can open up the bottom to get the end bit, which is useful. And it's an awful lot easier to thread when you have a needle threader because you've got quite thick thread. Now remember, it's, it, it may snap a few times when you first start as you're get, getting used to it. You may need to adjust your tension a little bit because you're working with a thick thread at the top. So don't be perturbed if you start to sew and it breaks. You just keep playing with it until it works. Oh, I knew that wouldn't work first time. Right, in there, over there, you go around there, and then there, and then there. Needle in the uppermost position, goes around there, goes around there, needle goes down. That's it, got it. Hadn't got the needle quite high enough. So again, be careful with it, because it is it is the kind of, oh, come here, just got that caught. The kind of thread that will fray. Just need to be patient with it. There we go. Okay. So you can actually see there, look, you've got like a nylon filament, of the metal filament in the centre, then it's wrapped with nylon around the edge. So let's, let's pull that through a little bit there. Right. Then we shall drop our feed dogs and put on the darning foot. So let me bring the needle down. So the bar on the darning foot uh, here needs to sit on top of the needle clamp here. And apart from that, it goes on in just the same way as any other foot. Oh, it do. Like the same way as your walking foot would do. So screw that on. With this machine, there are a few different types of um, of darning foot or free motion foot. I'm using the open-toed one purely because that's what I'm used to using at home. Right, then let's have a couple of, just get some more of that. And we'll have a play. So I'm going to slow the machine down. And I think we'll have a play without using the tension first of all. It's asking me to raise the feed dogs. So just double checking that I know that the feed dogs are supposed to be down. And again, I've slowed the machine down so I can't go particularly fast. And I think that looks really good. So I'm going to do green on green. 
Now with um, free motion embroidery, if you haven't done this before, the idea is you drop the feed dogs or some sewing machines have got a plate that cover the feed dogs up so they don't do the job. So the machine isn't feeding the fabric through the machine. You've got to move it. So if you don't move it, you're going to end up with a big knot because your needle is just going up and down and nothing's happening. So if you move the, the fabric quickly, you're going to get a long stitch. If you move it slowly, you're going to get a small stitch. doesn't matter which, depends on the kind of look that you like, but it's important to try and have the consistency and the speed. So start off going slowly. Personally, I find it easier, not with a metallic thread, but I find it easier to sew quickly. Um, I, I think it's a little bit like when you ride a bike. If you ride a bike slowly, you get a little bit wobbly. If you ride it quickly, then you stay upright. Um, so I find it easier doing that. And I like a scribbly look. I'm not a particularly neat free motion embroiderer. So I tend to go around a few times because one wobbly line around a piece of applique looks wrong. It looks like it's a mistake. But when you go around a few times and you get a few wobbly lines, then it looks deliberate, which is what it is. So it's like sketchy. If you have, um, or if you're going to be doing a lot of free motion embroidery, I would suggest that you invest in um, some quilting gloves. You've probably got those on the website because um, they'll keep grease from your fingers off the fabric, but it'll also help you to grip onto your fabric to help it move smoother. And the thing is to just enjoy it. Oh, missed a little bit there, you see. So you can go back over it again. Right, I think that's it. That's it, and then we're just going to go over and over. I'll just go around these once, but normally I go over and over, and then that'll make it even more super sparkly. But again, take it easy, take it slowly. If you find, I can just see it coming through actually, if you find you see some of the um, bobbin fill coming through, your bobbin thread, I'm using white here so it's quite obvious, um, just loosen the tension a little bit. So, oh, I'm not sure how to do it on this machine. But basically that means that the top thread with it being thicker is pulling the bottom thread up a little bit. So if you just loosen the tension slightly, that'll stop that happening. So again, I'm just going around. It's like a little bit of Christmas frosting, isn't it? There we go. Actually, I've just broke the thread there, but that was quite good timing. Because I think that's just enough. It just adds that little bit of sparkle. No, yeah, there we go. So where are we? Oh, now we might come back a bit. Let me... Let's see what it looks like with the bow on now. I was, I was going to put lots and lots more uh, holly leaves on there, but I don't think we're going to have time to do all of that malarkey. So there's that bit of the bow. There's that bit. And one of those. Should have done that in a different fabric, really, shouldn't I? And then we've got the berries as well. And... There's a tail. Oh, oh, there you are. That's that. Those go there. Oh, I didn't cut out the middle bit, did I? But you all notice that at home. So I've got enough left here to just do that middle bit. Templates make it so much easier, don't they? You know, I've got a really nice bow there. I couldn't do anything as good as that by hand. And it means everything's consistent as well. If you're making something to sell and you want lots of things that look exactly the same, then you can do that. So that comes off the back. And the thing is, you've got the idea of the wreath on the packaging, but you can make any kind of arrangement that you like. Put as many leaves on there as you like. Um, they've used different colours and different prints of fabric as well, which is quite pretty. So, so the bows, let's put it right over, let's put it there. And those go there, right near the back of those, don't I? And it doesn't just have to be for Christmas. You've got a bow here that you can use on, on anything. Right. Peel that away. So it could be birthday bows, 
Gonna make a bow tie. Right. Bit of paper on there. And you don't have to use a metallic thread. I think metallic thread is lovely for Christmas. But if you're um if you like hand sewing, then again a hand sewing blanket stitch with you can even buy metallic embroidery thread. Uh, that would look pretty on here as well. But remember your metallic threads are your early bird. And they're just £8.99. I'm just going to iron that down before I carry on. Not you too. Ooh, meet up. Just to hold it in place while I put the rest of it together so it doesn't all blow away everywhere. Yes, eight ninety nine for those metallic threads and the Gutterman. So you know you've got a nice quality thread there as well. So I, I would, should have used a darker red on that, I think. Which there is one in the pack, but you know, I didn't. That goes there. A bit further up like that. Then we've got these two tails. There we go. And again, this will ultimately be a gift bag, I think. That'll make a nice gift bag, which is something that can be reused year after year, which we're very conscious of these days, are we not? Um, but you could use the motif on table runners. You could use them um, as, the, as an applique on an, um, a quilt block. So it goes there like that. And then let's change over to red and we'll have another bit of a play. Just going to check your messages. Am I messing you? I had loads this morning, haven't we? Oh, Dawn, we don't sell the needles, I'm afraid. Um, try. Um, oh, lovely. Um, Alan's made a, a patchwork cushion. Matching handbag coming up. Um, Pam, thank you. Chalky paracetamol, yep. Um, and thank you, Bernadette. Lovely. And thanks for all your comments about Rachel as well. I'm sure she's going to appreciate that. It's always a little bit, bit nerve-wracking when, um, when you're brand new. She did a really good job, didn't she? She's lovely. She's really chatty as well, which is nice. Knows what she's doing. And in the next hour, she's going to be making or hints and tips and advice on how to make the, the new look top that you see there as well. Right, let's pop that on there. Got a, ver a very varied day today, haven't we? Applique, homewares, chickens, dressmaking. Got kits coming up later on as well. So round there, round there, across there, under there, and oh yes. Remember, this is a thick thread. So it's not struggling through the eye of the needle, but it knows it's there. Right. Only works out at £1.28 a spool. That's good value. Okay, so again with the metallic thread, I'm going to take it slowly. And, oh, Maureen sent a message um, asking if the applique scissors can be used for left-handers. Yes, the scissors. Um, the scissors have two holes the same size. So with shears, you'll find you've got one big hole and one small hole. But scissors are um, symmetrical, so you can use those either hand. They're exactly the same both ways around. So yes, you can. Right. Any more questions? It's um, studio at sewingstreet.com if you want to send an email. Or you can come through to the Facebook page, which is just Sewing Street TV. So again, I like to go around a few times. We might do a bit of that in the middle of there as well. If you want to draw your lines on first, then use a heat, water or air erasable pen. But again, with your metallic thread, remember it is metal. It will heat up and it will become Quite, um, quite weak. So appropriate needle helps, sewing slowly helps. 
and always have a play on um, a scrap piece of the same fabric that you're working on because you may need to adjust the tension slightly. Just because you're using two different weights of fabric, uh, sorry, of thread, one on the top and one on the bottom. Oh, I'm all over the place with this. But it gives a nice highlight, doesn't it? Let's go around there a few times. And then a bit of that in the middle. Just to show you the folds. Should we go around there again? So just try to keep the movement um, the, the same, so the same speed. Try to keep it consistent. There we go. Oh, and relax. Relax, that's really important as well. You do tend to find that you do this a little bit when you're sewing, when you're concentrating. So check yourself every now and again. I, I'm, I, I get pains in the neck. <laughs> um, which uh, I've got a very good chiropractor sorts me out, but I blame it entirely on cutting and, um, and tensing when I'm sewing. But isn't that pretty? So it's just enough. It's just a, a little bit of a highlight there. Just a little bit of sparkle. So normally I would, um, I'd have filled all of the background with holly leaves, first of all, because um, now I can't tuck them behind there. Um, and then just embroidered each layer as I go individually. And then let me just show you this as well, because this is what these scissors really come into their own for. My applique didn't quite match there and I want to trim it down. So I have got bonder web on, so I'm going to peel it up a little bit. But if I just wanted to trim, I'm just going to put it down there. I can then go right underneath the arrow that I'm going to cut and cut right up to the stitches, but without cutting through the, the, the actual stitches themselves. So this is, they're, they're both sharp, but this blade kind of bumps up against the stitches and trims really, really close. Even if you have, where's the little friskers? These are fabulous little snips, but you can't cut this way with them. And if I'm trimming something right back, I, I can't get these scissors flat enough to actually, because my fingers are in the way. But with these ones being shaped, I can get really close to the stitches without my hands getting in the way. So the blades are flat at all times. So that's why you need those. They're only £16.99. Right, whether that will be finished or not, I don't know. So we may have a giveaway next week, but we, we may not. <laughs> um, so that's a brand new template that I've been using today. Oh, which is just £3.49. And I think it's going to be something that you use a lot because... Um, it's not just the holly leaves, you've got the bow on there as well. And of course, it's a plastic template. You could use this for paper crafting as well. So you could, if you're a paper crafter as well as a sewer, you could, you could sew a project. Um, or if it's a gift bag, like I was intending to make, you can uh, make the gift bag and then maybe do a gift tag using the same template so it matches. Or even if you just use a couple of the holly leaves on the gift tag, would look lovely too. Nice to use on felt. If you're using felt, then obviously you're not going to need any kind of um, satin stitch around the edge. You don't need to finish that off because felt isn't going to fray. Um, the wreath, I think, is a lovely idea. All you need to do is just to keep building up the same shapes and make that as big or as small as you want it to. So again, that's only £3.49. So, oh, actually, we do have Christmas in, in July coming up next weekend. Do you want a quick look at what's coming up? Not going to show you. Not going to show you what's coming up. <laughs> Yeah, next Friday, Saturday and Sunday we have Christmas. I'm going to be with you on the Sunday. Um, but I'll oh, go on then. Let Vix tell you a little bit more about it. Christmas is going to be here before we know it. And as with every year, we want to make sure that we get our makes ready in time for gifting on the big day or for decorations in the lead up. We're here to help with our Christmas make shows, starting with our three day event on Friday the 31st of July until Sunday the 2nd of August. And we'll be live for five hours each day too. 
expect lots of festival quilting, FPP, dressmaking and needle felting to make all your decorations, advent calendars, cushion covers and so much more. We'll have our expert tutorials from some of our favourite guest designers and a fabulous competition exclusively for our Sewing Street family. Keep your eyes peeled on our email newsletter, Facebook and Instagram for more details in the run-up. And don't forget to tune in from 8am to 1pm on Friday the 31st of July until Sunday the 2nd of August on Freeview Channel 74, Sky 670 or on our YouTube channel. So I've just spent five minutes looking for the thread that was actually in the machine all along. Um, okay, we have... In fact, you saw that uh, Delphine's coming up for Christmas in July. We have a couple of her, of her kits here as well. We've got, we've got a kit show coming up at um, 11 o'clock, by the way, but we thought we'd bring these in early because they involve a plique. And this is Harley and Friends. Um, I love Harley. He's a... Um, um, an Aberdeen Angus. So he's got a long fringe, but he's rather funky in this one because he's got his mates with him and they're wearing headphones, they're holding flowers, they're wearing ties. Um, really simple instructions. They're very well written and very, very clear to understand as well. And this is a book. Um, and we put it together with you uh, for you with five, sorry, four and a half metres of fabric as well. So your templates, your instructions are here in the back of the book. I would suggest that you get hold of a light box if you don't have one already so you can trace off the patterns and then you can use them over and over again. So we have sold out uh, previous with these so we've put together another bundle for you and this is Alison Glass Fabrics. So there's the panels. So I'll just open this up and show you. So you have those. So what um, uh, Delphine does with this, she's not actually using it as the panel as you see here. Um, she's just cutting it up, which means that she's making it into a different style of fabric to use. Clever. Okay, so there's that. Then you have all of, look at the mess in here. No, and I've got, I've got Rachel coming in in a minute. I have to keep everything nice and tidy for guests. I have to put some thread back in the machine again for her as well. I want to lift up the feed dogs. I'll do that now while I think about it. That, that would really confuse anybody, wouldn't it? Where have you gone? So, we have two and a half metres of white. Then there's the sunshine yellow. You've got fuchsia. These are all half metres. There's your turquoise. There's the green. And there's your Alice and Glass panel. Um, so that's £49.99. And, and this is the white kit. Or you can go for the grey option. Have to admit, I like the grey. You get all of those instructions included as well. But I do love the grey as a background. It really makes everything pop. So, Glenn, you've got a Glenn. Um, your Alice in Glass panel. And then the turquoise fuchsia gold green. But this time, two metres of the grey for you to use in the background. And let me show you. In our new studio, we'll have lots of room to display things like this. Open up. There we go. Cupboard. There we are. And that's what you can make. It's huge. Or you could make those into two cushion covers. Or I think it might be quite nice if you went for a couple of kits. And you can go for, you can make the quilt and some cushion covers as well. But isn't that striking? This is um, there's a wall hanging that she made for her son, for his bedroom. See what I mean about the grey background as well? It really makes those colours pop, doesn't it? So you could, um, <laughs> we've got the bow tie. You mix and match them as well if you wanted to. One's got the, got sunglasses on. Here's a cool one. And the one down at the bottom there's got a flower. And this one's got headphones on. Who would have thought? A cow with headphones on. <laughs> He's listening to music. Oh, blind. Right, okay. Whew. Um, so again, all of your instructions in there as well. That is such great value for money, isn't it? You're getting loads and loads of fabric with those two. 
Right, so that's that, that's that. And then we have somewhere under here a Tilda bundle. And this is quite a nice idea as well because you get the fabrics and then you've got lots of ideas as to what you can actually make with them. And you can make all of these with the fabrics that you're going to get. So there's the cathedral window pin cushion. You've got the mum and me bird cushion. All your templates and instructions and everything here. There's the happy camping cushion, show you that in a second. And then you have mini hexi coasters as well. So in your kit, you'll have your charm pack, uh, which is Tilda fabric. And you've got your backing instructions as well. Um, and you get some bond web too. I don't know where I put that. But look at this, isn't this pretty? So obviously you're going to need more um, backing fabric if you're going to make something like this or binding or whatever it is that you're using with it. But it's not fun and springtime and happy. Um, Delphine is kind of stippled all over here. That's something that you can do. You don't have to if you don't want to. But all of your instructions, again, are to be able to make this. And there's a little bit of hand sewing here as well. So we've got the embroidery thread with French knots in there. And the grass and the flowers down here as well have all been hand sewn, which is what Delphine is famed for, isn't she? A little bit of hand sewing on a felting normally. Um, so everything that you need to make all of those is just £49.99, which again is great value for many, is it not? We've got so much in this show. Um, also, while we talk about applique, we've got the alphabets. <gasps> These have been so popular. Since we first, I mean, when we first, first launched it, we sold out of all of them, all in one go. Um, and a lot of you have been going for more than one of these as well. So these are applique letters. There's more than one of the most popular ones. We've got uppercase and lowercase, and we've got numbers there as well. So I'm thinking um, school bags, anything that you want to put a name on, maybe sweatshirts. You don't have to have sewn the project that you're making just to add a little bit of applique. Go for your bonder web with these because that's going to make it a lot easier to apply them. So gift bags. Um, just initials, there could be quilt blocks. You could make just toys, you know, that the, the cubes, I made one of those when we first launched these, just with letters or numbers on them. So you could make games with them. So you could do gift bags just with letters of names on. Um, okay, actually that goes really well with the Christmas Fat Quarters, doesn't it? Oh, I could have mixed and matched. Oh! So you could, there are more colours you're getting there as well. There's the, I'll show you my, my leftover bits because there's eight in there all together. <laughs> there they are. But they all go very well. Um, so you could make a gift bag out of the fabric, use your uh, holly and bow template and then put initials or short names on there as well. It could be mum or dad or sis or bro um, or initials, numbers, dates. I do like the grey one. So that's your traditional, and those are £12. Oh, no, that's your fat quarters, isn't it? They're £12.99. These are the traditional letters. Again, just a quick look what we've got there. And um, I love the way that they're not just solid colours as well. You've got um, spots and stars and all kinds of prints on those. That's only £5.99. Do you know, if you don't see all of the letters that you need or there's not enough of them, go for a couple of them. That is such good value for money. So that's your traditional. We've also got the grey one and look, we've sold so many of these already what have you made love to see your pictures what did you make with yours okay then we have the greys which are these a bit posh these aren't they I'm thinking um well I'm thinking baby's nurseries to be honest my my granddaughter my little granddaughter has a grey nursery and it's actually, it looks really lovely, greys and whites look really smart and clean. Um, so it may be bunting, um, something maybe a pillowcases, cushion covers, uh, toy boxes, or like I said, just games with the numbers on. Or three Zs, look, that's got to be on a pillowcase, hasn't it? So that's uh, £5.99 again is your price there. And you've got 140 centimetres wide and it's almost half a metre in length. So you've got, got a lot of fabric there. Designed and printed in the UK. That's that. 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now then, Delphine's grey kit, which is the one that makes this, we're running out of stock. So if you have this, oh, we've got eight left. If you have this in your basket on the website, please could you check out. Now's the time to check out while we've still got some. That's the grey option. Remember, we do have the white option as well, including all of your instructions and the fabric. You need your own backing fabric, but everything else that you need to make this huge quilt for £49.99. That's such a good Now, the gyro cutter that I was using earlier on is a clever little thing. It has an incredibly sharp blade, um, but when you're cutting, I shan't cut now, um, but it kind of swizzles around. So have a bit of a practice with it first, but it gives you very accurate cutting. You know when you're cutting out um, something like the middle of the letter E here? Obviously you put this on a cutting mat, you, can literally, you could literally just go around in one direction. And as you're moving it from one direction to another, you can see the blade, let me do it on a plain white bit, you can see the blade actually turning around with you. So put a bit of pressure on the top of there if you want to. Put the point of the blade onto your work and then you literally just point at what you're cutting and it'll cut through. I'm not putting pressure on there at all. But for tiny pieces of applique, like the little bits in the, in the centre of here, you can get a really accurate cut. It does come with you with some bits and bobs though. So in the bundle, you're saving £5 for starters, which is always a bonus. So you have the tool, you will have a spare blade. You've got your uh, fab, fab, fab Grip Powder and this is going to go, um, all the instructions are on there, but that goes on your back of your fabric. Um, and it's like a paste that you make out of it, so that goes on your fabric. And then there is also um, something to make your mat a little bit sticky. So if, you're, if you don't want to use heat and bond, but you've got some intricate shapes to cut out, but you don't then want to stick them onto something else, then this is an ideal system for you. Get all of those four pieces. So this, the blade, and your, um, your powder to go on the back of the fabric, and the one that goes onto your mat as well to make it a little bit tacky. And that's £29.96 is your price there. Okay, now that I need to tidy up a bit, because uh, Rachel's going to be coming back again in the next hour and we're going to be looking at the new look top that she's made here. So I'll tidy up, you put the kettle on, and we'll see you in about five minutes. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. It's so great to be here and part of the Sewing Street family. I'm local, I'm only down the road in uh, Warwickshire. Uh, I started sewing many years ago uh, when I was very young doing uh, lots of art and painting and eventually I went into textiles and I really enjoyed doing the two together. I then had a bit of a break. Uh, something you don't know about me maybe is that I spent many years in the Royal Air Force and eventually in uh, the police as well. And then I went full circle and I've come back to uh, my happy place of sewing, and uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, my be best sewing tip is measure twice and cut once. I have chipped up a couple of times by uh, not measuring properly and I do always regret it. So now I always measure twice, cut once. Anyway, I really hope to be with you again soon and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.
Christmas is going to be here before we know it. And as with every year, we want to make sure that we get our makes ready in time for gifting on the big day or for decorations in the lead up. We're here to help with our Christmas make shows, starting with our three day event on Friday the 31st of July until Sunday the 2nd of August. And we'll be live for five hours each day too. Expect lots of festival quilting, FPP, dressmaking and needle felting to make all your decorations, advent calendars, cushion covers and so much more. We'll have our expert tutorials from some of our favourite guest designers and a fabulous competition exclusively for our Sewing Street family. Keep your eyes peeled on our email newsletter, Facebook and Instagram for more details in the run up. And don't forget to tune in from 8am to 1pm on Friday the 31st of July until Sunday the 2nd of August on Freeview Channel 74, Sky 670 or on our YouTube channel. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hi, I'm Rosie Wells. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits. Feeling good, it's about looking great. Making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside. And it's about the life that you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com alternatively you can message us on our official facebook page morning welcome back to sewing the street now in this hour rachel's gonna be with me in just a second and she's going to be giving us some hints and tips on working with stretch fabric and um, creating this new look top which you've been checking out of already it's obviously a very popular design um so if you've got any dressmaking questions then rachel's going to be the expert so bring them on in the next hour either on facebook or on our um our email uh, email page it was going reasonably well, wasn't it? I haven't broken into any strange accents yet this morning. Um, I haven't had anything untoward come out of my mouth. But sometimes when you start talking, I've no idea what happens. Now I don't know where I'm going with it. A bit like now, just ramble on about nothing. Was I talking about patterns? Was I not? Um, oh no, it emails. That was it. If you wanted to drop us an email, got a lump of thread in an inappropriate place there. Looked a bit weird. Um, it's studio at sewingstreet.com if you'd like to send us an email, is what I was trying to get around to, which I could have said in the first place if it got my words up right. Anyway, um, size wise, you'll be wanting to know about this one. It's one size, so you've only got one pattern. It's extra small through to extra large. Your sizes are actually on the back of the pattern here. So, just really quickly, if you are um, an extra small, that is a bus size. 30 and a half on its smallest, going up to the largest size, which is your 46 inch bust on the XL. Don't go by your dress sizes. A lot of dress sizes are American sizes anyway, so you'll find them very different to ours. Um, always go by your measurements. You'll, you'll find that these me measurements will vary from one manufacturer to another anyway, so ignore that bit. You go for bust size. And if you don't know, you know, if, if your bust is nowhere near what your hips are, still go for your bust size because it's easier to increase or decrease here than it is to increase or decrease there. But this is a really simple pattern by the looks. But it's a really flattering shape, isn't it? It's got a nice little nipped in waist. 
I like these longs. I love that shape of sleeve. You've probably gathered by now where a lot of tops like that. Um, particularly flattering for those of us who don't have a waist anymore. And it hasn't got sleeves to put in and because it's stretch fabric, you haven't got any closures or anything like that. So it's going to be really easy to work with. Very stylish. $7.99 is a good price for a pattern as well, isn't it? So that's a new look Mrs. pattern. It does say easy. So if you're new to dressmaking, then this is the range of patterns that you should be looking for. Um, anything that says easy on it or looking at different brands of patterns. Um, there's, oh, there's quite a few different ones, but easy means that if you are brand new to sewing, it's a good place to start. Now we have put together some fabrics for you. Um, I've got some new ones as well. Isn't this pretty? Red flowers on green jersey knit. Um, so being a jersey and being a knit, it's got a little bit of stretch in there as well. But this is nice and fine and comfortable and cool. So if you're looking at knitwear uh, or knitted fabrics for summertime, this is perfect. And such a lovely, pretty, ditzy floral fabric as well. So two metres and it's 140 wide. Um, so you've got plenty of fabric there and your two metres is enough to make the largest size of the top. There's a, I shan't open it all up, but you've got a lot of fabric there. That's lovely. I, and it feels really, it feels nice and smooth as well. Very pretty, I like that one a lot. And brand new today, we like a bit of newness, don't we? We've got another newness. This is the blue and white stripe. Stripes are flattering if they're horizontal, if they're small stripes, they say. And again, you've got a very fine jersey. So it's not fine that it's see-through, but fine enough so you've got a really nice drape, which I think when you've got gathers, as this does under the bust, is really important. And when you've got a loose-fitting top, it's kind of nice to have that fluidity of your fabric. Um, so that, again, is £29.99 for two metres. And there's the light blue, the dark blue, the slate blue, and you've got white. So you've got four colours running through there. Very nautical. Look nice with jeans, that colour, wouldn't it? Then we have a little bit of glitter. So this is the navy. A little bit of glitter, a little bit of sparkle, but it's not too much. This is a heavier weight and it's brushed on the wrong side. So it's a nice warm one, this one. If you're thinking of making things for uh, autumn, winter time, this would be perfect. So this is the one that Rachel made the top behind me out of. And it does have this stretch in there. It's not as stretchy as the other one, but it does have the give in there. So again, you're not going to... That's so cosy in there, I have to say. 90% um, <laughs> cotton and you've got 10% lorex, which is your sparkly bits. But that is so soft oh that would be lovely when the when the when the nights are drawing in nice christmas present as well though wouldn't it but not too sparkly i'm not i'm not a jazzy kind of girl myself i like a bit of glitter but i like to be subtle is what i like the pink's pretty as well so you've got the same deal you've got your two meter bundle there and you've got the give and this is another same fabric so you've got that that oh look oh coming in that is so soft oh um but again it's a thicker fabric so on very hot days you may prefer to save this till the winter time but there again you can get it home you don't have to rush to make anything up then do you that again is 29 pounds 99 90% cotton 10% lurex and 145 wide. And then we've got one of your favourite colours of the season, the ochre. So that, with a little bit of gold sparkle in there. So maybe a little bit more dressy, but you can always dress it down with a pair of jeans. Or white linen trousers. White would look nice, wouldn't it? But again, you've got that thicker weight, the fleece on, on the inside, which is so soft. And plenty enough, again, to make the largest size. So if you're making the small size, then you're going to have some left over. But we're, sell we're selling this separately to the pattern, so you don't have to make that top if you just think that we've got um, fabulous value. OK, if you're new to us, we've got a couple of ways of ordering. You can either order on the website, take a look at everything else that we have available for you there, or you can order on our phone number, which is a local free phone number. Here's Vix to give you more details.
Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. So a bit of dressmaking in this hour, which is, that's your background, isn't it? It is, Not yes. chickens. No, no, not, not chickens <laughs> or hearts or tea no. cosies, <laughs> although they are lovely to make, obviously. Um, but no, my, my background is dressmaking, mostly bridal wear, although I do make other things as well, because um, you have the odd mother of the bride coming in or yes. bridesmaid or anything like that. I'm making a pair of trousers for a lady at the moment. I've cut the top of a bridesmaid's dress off. She doesn't like wearing dresses, which is fine. So I've made her a pair of trousers to go with the cut-off top and made a little peplum for the top. Oh, and what a lovely idea. Yeah, so that's the sort of thing that um, I get up to in do, my normal day-to-day. Do you -day. Do have patterns as well? No, I don't. I wish I could. I'm sure I could if but I really, really it tried. It seems I've always wanted to learn how to do, and but me. there's just... We, we can't sew extra days in the week. That's I know, that's that. the problem. And, yeah. and you look at things, you think, oh, yes, I... I really want to try and learn to do that and then you think well actually where am I going to get the time yeah. to do all of this so <laughs> yeah so I always stick to what I know what I feel comfortable with um, and my biggest tip with sewing I think would be take your time nobody's watching you no nobody's going to watch you if you make a mistake nope. and have to unpick it they will only see the end result so I would just say just please don't panic um, when you do get your um, your pattern, what I always do is the obvious thing to do really is to have a look at the pattern to see um, what size you are on the pattern. As, as Debbie said, you're not always going to be the same uh, size that you are, you know, normally in the shops. They are very very different sizes. So with a normal dressmaking pattern where you've got darts, you would measure yourself across the top of your, your bust and maybe have to make it slightly bigger if you're fuller in the bust. Or with a knit, you can get away with an awful lot. So always measure yourself over the fullest part of your body because you don't want the knit starting to seep through and it becomes see-through. Not a very good look. So um, that would be my tip. Also with stretchy fabrics, because um, you can see, oh, I've got the pattern still attached to that. But as you can see with this, it does stretch either side. So if you use an ordinary straight stitch, the minute you go and sit down, especially if there's a seam here, it's not so much on this top, but when you go to sit down, you will hear... <laughs> and then when you get back up again, you could be showing your knickers. <laughs> not a good look again. <laughs> So, Unless they're Janet Rager, pretty good, of course. <laughs> and what the zigzag <laughs> stitch does is stretch. So with a straight stitch, it won't. With a zigzag stitch, it will. Okay, so that's the biggest tip. Um, overlocking, not everybody's got an overlocker. If you do have one, I tend to stitch the seam first and then overlock it just to give it a bit of more strength. The overlocker does neaten it up and it looks really professional when you've done it. Um, if you don't have an overlocker, um, then with a lot of knit fabrics, you don't actually have to finish the seams off. You, it, you know, it, you just don't have to. But after you've done the seam, just to neaten it up, just use another zigzag stitch or even pinking shears 
to go down each side of the seam and then give it a good press. And that's all you need to do. It's really, really simple. And it's a lot easier than what people think. Um, plus also, if you are a bit more ample proportioned, um, then knitting felt is, is very easy to wear. It sort, of, it sort of stretches with you, whereas you're not sort of like caught in your dress. <laughs> so, um, you know, and I do like, um, knitting I was going to say I, do. I do I like do knitting but, um, but no I do like sewing with knitted fabrics for that very reason because it's very very easy for me to wear um, with this particular top what is nice about this okay. yeah, and you can actually sew a channel in the seam we might not have time to do that today but you actually sew a channel so you don't sew double stitches on the um, inside and thread elastic through and that again especially underneath your bust is really really flattering it's supposed to be the most flattering part of your body that isn't it yeah it's not the waist it's the, it's the empire line isn't well it? i don't know about you but if i have anything too tight there i'm sort of going <laughs> 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 where it, gets, it just feels a little bit too tight yeah. so having that round there is just really brilliant and also around the back you've got it fully fully round the back as well so you know, so if you are more amply proportioned on your hips, for instance, that is ideal. Plus also you've got the little vents at the side and that is brilliant. Beautiful to wear with, with trousers yeah. or jeans. I like the shape of the neck mm -hmm. as well. Oh yeah, it, it's really, really flattering. Yeah. Um, and I will um, show you how to get the neck on. It's not as frightening as what it seems. Okay, you do need a little bit of an iron as well just to press it flat but the but the the main thing is is that you need to um actually have we got this on back to front oh no maybe not um no so so the main thing is is that you the the neck will seem smaller than the hole you're putting it into does that make sense yeah so um so what you do is once you pin it round at the strategic points and in the middle and at the back you will think, oh no, that's not going to fit. It will, because what you do is you stretch it and then this will close up because otherwise you'll have a floppy neck. We don't want a floppy a neck. A floppy neck is we not good. All right, so it's very, very simple to make, as I say. You've got two little ties as well. And I just think that just adds to the design, very, very feminine. So you can either wear that round the front or some, pe some people may prefer to wear it just round at the back and the sleeves like Debbie said beautiful as you can see this is curved all the way around so you don't have to insert sleeves which makes this pattern very very simple to do and you've created a garment with very little effort really yeah so it's, it's lovely with this particular fabric it is it is actually fleece lined, so I'd probably wear this probably on slightly warmer days. I don't know about you, Debbie, um, you know, but, you know, somebody invites you out for a cheese and wine evening. I go out to them all the time. I don't really. I've got no friends. I, I, no, no, I have. <laughs> <laughs> but if anybody Next invites you. Next time I have a cheese and wine party, Yeah, I'll absolutely. You. And yeah. so you can imagine if I get yeah. an invite, I'm there. <laughs> No, so, yeah, so if anybody, forget the cheese. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> forget the cheese. Um, no, so if anybody invites you ad, ad hoc of an evening, you can whip this up in an evening. You really can. Uh, not an evening, but if you start in the daytime, you can finish it by the evening, ready to wear in the evening. It is that simple. All right. So that's enough waffle from me. <laughs> Doesn't she waffle? <laughs> So with this pattern, you have seven pieces. Now, like I say, when you start off using the pattern, you will find your instructions are rather than open up that brand new packet. I'll open up mine that I've already done, Blue Peter. <laughs> so inside the pattern, you have your instruction sheet. And it's quite often it has some quite good tips on there as well. Okay. How to gather. Turn it around your way. Placing you. That's it. <laughs> She's professional. <laughs> well, only because I got it wrong so many times. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> um, so if you have a look at your pattern, okay, it will show you the, the different uh, pieces of pattern that you need. 
and also the different types of garments that you can make. You can see on here that's got that's a longer length, that's a shorter length. Um, these are longer sleeves. This one here has got a V-neck, um, mm. plus it's longer without any ties. Um, and this one, I think that it looks the same to me, but I think it is slightly different, but the sleeve, you've got very variations on the sleeves and variations on the length. Um, so you could choose you which one dress, you... couldn't you? Oh, you need a bit more fabric, but that'd be nice. I was thinking about that when yeah. I was making it actually, without the splits. Oh, well, I don't know. Debbie would have the splits. I wouldn't. <laughs> 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 so, um, so once you've decided what uh, what style you actually want, we're making a. Hey, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we like silly little schoolgirls, aren't we? <laughs> Honestly, what's happened Don't to me? The small. What's happening to sorry. me? No, <laughs> no, no. I love it. I love being on. <laughs> Um, so you choose which style you want. Um, so then, if you have a look down these numbers here. You've got one to nine, okay? So we know we're going to do style A. So we have a look down, number one, bodice front and sleeves, that's got A and B. So because it says A, we know we need that. Number two, bodice back and sleeve, that's got A in there as well. So we know we need one and two. Three neckband, again, you've got A in there. Four front, five back, six tie end, and elastic guide. And that's it. So it's seven pieces. So for the construction wise, you would only have six pieces. The seventh piece is actually an elastic guide. So you just literally place your elastic on there so you know what size um, to put through. All right, so it's really, so really simple. You don't need to cut that out, really, do you? you no, do you? you don't. No, you don't really. I only cut it out for the purposes of, of yeah. showing people today, really. But no, you, you wouldn't really need to. Um, I mean, I suppose you could even make it even simpler and just measure it. <laughs> you hadn't really thought about that. <laughs> well, it's too easy for me. Um, right, okay, so now we've decided what we're going to be doing. Um, with the pattern, it will even give you um, directions as to how to lay your pattern onto the fabric to make the best of your fabric. Because if you have your, your fab, uh, if you have your pieces all down one end, you're gonna and then just like a tiny little bit on the end, you're gonna waste an awful lot of fabric. So this is just a guideline, okay? So if we go over the page, so um, it does tell you the certain sewing techniques for knitted fabrics. So use a ballpoint or stretch needle. Now the difference between a ballpoint and an ordinary needle is the fact that a uh, ballpoint is literally as it says, if you've got the needle going down and right on the end, and don't test it with your fingers, but right on the end you've got a tiny little ball on the end of the needle, it's rounded. So that when it goes into the fabric, it actually parts the fabric. It doesn't slice into it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So. What you don't want to do with a knitted fabric is start slicing through the fabric because it'll start fraying and then you'll create little holes in the in the garment. So that's a really good first tip. OK, so. Um, so the, the knits do, although I've said to press it, there's certain areas on the garment that you will need pressing. Um, but it doesn't need a heavy press, not like you would with cottons, uh, that you need a really crisp line. The pressing is just to secure the pieces that you've just made. And it says here, raw edges of the hem and facings are left raw unless using a serger, which is exactly what we were saying before. So you can use a serger or um, an overlocker in our terms, or pinking shears. Okay. So it says use a twin sewing machine needle for double stitched hem, but I've never done that. Have you? I, if it's a very plain could. fabric and I want it to stand out, then, yeah. then maybe. If you want it as a feature, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah indeed. Um, but generally, I, I can get away with not having to do that. Yeah. So, and I think whilst people are, are learning, we all have to learn some, somehow um, and try and make it as easy as you possibly can for yourself, really. So the pieces of the fabric that we've got, 
just folded that up and I didn't mean to. So this will actually start giving you the instructions of how you piece together your garment. Okay, so we've, as you remember, we've got seven pieces. So that's number four there. So we'll put that to one side. I always like to keep my pattern pieces pinned to the fabric. Until I do I use them as, as well. I do as well. Really good tip that because if you've got all these pattern pieces, you think, oh my gosh, where's the front <laughs> piece? Where's yeah. the back piece? And so you'll get yourself very, very confused. So as Debbie said, as you can see there, I've, I've still got mine just pinned a little bit to the top so I can see which one it is. So we're going to be starting with one and two. All right. Do you use a dress form? Occasionally I do. If it's for myself, yes, I do. Do you? Yes. Because I find it incredibly difficult to measure something on myself. Do you? Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. And rather than sort of take, keep taking it off the mannequin, putting it on, think, oh no, that needs to be taken in slightly there. You pin it, off it comes again on the dress form. <laughs> it's a workout. Yeah. Whereas if you're, if I'm making something for somebody else, it's much much easier to have that person standing there, and then you can start shaving it in. No, I don't mean shaving, but you know what I mean. <laughs> sort of just, just. <laughs> I'm just. I'm, oh, she needs to shave. <laughs> I don't <laughs> shave my clients. I promise. <laughs> um, <laughs> what a dreadful that's thought! A whole new service. Oh, um, thought gone. <laughs> um, anyway, when I have my when I have my customers standing in front of me, and just say. Just say round, round here, it's just slightly a little bit baggy, but then I can pin that on them um, and then obviously make it a little bit more made to measure. Um, when I've got it for myself, it's just hopeless, so I do put it on the mannequin. <laughs> That's if the mannequin goes up to my size, of course. Um. <laughs> we do have some on the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I did see actually on another programme. Very, very good. Yeah, the lovely ones. So we have here... Number one, and we have, which is the bodice front and sleeve, and we have here number two, bodice back. It's going to fall off the table, it is, isn't it? it? Is, like, yeah. It's like yeah. that game, isn't it, that you go like that and you <laughs> have to... <laughs> I did that at a, um, at a um, hen party, but I thought gone. I'm sure we've all played that game. Um, anyway. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. No, I'll explain later. Okay. Not to go on air. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> this one hilarious show this morning, isn't it? That's what it's like on a Sunday. I know, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful. Right, so I know you were talking about notches last week, um, but this really is... Oh, Adele, she went notch crazy. I know. Mm -hmm. And I am as well now. <laughs> oh, no. But it just proves the importance, actually, of having your notches in the right places. Because if you don't have the notches, especially with a, with a knit, you can see there that notch. All right. So that is a placement notch, which will come to, to light in a minute. Now, the, now the, when you're cutting out this pattern, I sort of thought, oh, that's funny. I thought this had long sleeves. It's only got long. It's only got short sleeves. <laughs> That's because it's not that way round. <laughs> so this is actually your, your, your main bodice part, and this is your sleeves, the dolman sleeve. Okay? So, if we have a look at our pattern. On pattern number one, we have to gather the lower edge of the bodice front and sleeve between the notches. Okay? This gives us, this creates this. Okay? Right. The gathering underneath your bust. So if we take the front, are you a tailor's tacker or a fabric marker? A tailor's tacker, oh, yeah. yes. I think it's the way my mum taught me um, and also the way I was taught at school. Um, but for the purposes of this, there is only just one point on this that you would need a tailor's tack, which is on the event, just right. to show you how far up to go. But so for the purposes of today, um, I've actually just put a little pin in, but n normally if I was making it for somebody, I would do a little tailor's tack. Okay, it's a bit clearer. 
So this is the bodice front, so it shows us that we've got to gather the lowest edge of the bodice front and sleeve between the notches. Okay, so if you have a look at this, I've made the extra large. So you can see where I've just put these pins in, where, the, where that notch is. So we've got one notch there and one notch there. And because this fabric is actually cut on the fold, we've obviously got a matching pair. on this side. All right, so you've got pin there, pin there, pin there, pin there. And it's between those two points that we're going to be gathering. Okay. okay. So now I'm going to take my piece of pattern off. That was a chore when I was little, folding up my mum's oh. tissue paper patterns to put but them back in the But you can never put them back in no. they came out, can you? No. So in the end I just... <laughs> <laughs> I don't really do that, but I try and fold them up nice and neatly, but they never seem to, to go back in no. as they came no. out. So, so here Plastic we have... Wallets. Yeah. <laughs> so here we have, if we open it out, here you've got the pins. Let's just straighten that up. So you can actually either do that by hand. Um, I, I probably tend to do that, to be honest with you, because I'm a little bit more old fashioned. Um, so I'm going to do that by hand, actually, because I've set the machine to the um, to the zigzag. Unless I can just change it back again, can I? I think you just press on the straight stitch. That's it. Voila. <laughs> <laughs> and there it was. Big flash in the sky and we have a straight stitch. <laughs> Right, <laughs> so what I'm going to do, um, to alter the stitch length, how do we do that, Debbie? There's a, there's on here? Yep. This on here? I don't know. I where it says 2.4. 2. 2. That looks on like the, the one. Should we try it? We can't go wrong. So I would put it on, the, on a really big, big stitch. I'm going to put it on four and a half there. Because what we want to do is we have it too small, it's going to be very, it's, you can have tiny, tiny little, little gathers and it probably won't do very well on this type of fabric. So if you have a bigger stitch, then it's going to be a lot better. So, and also you want to do the um, gathers within your seam allowance. So your seam allowance is five eighths of an inch, which as you can see on my machine, I don't know if you, we can see on the machine. Can't quite see it coming down here so I'm well within that yeah. seam allowance so if we put the needle down I keep forgetting I don't have to pull that down this is <laughs> do it all the time it does it all for you <laughs> right yeah. so I'm just going to sew along here I think as well, if you, I know if you've got um, an overlocker, you can gather on an overlocker, but this way you, yes, can, get you can the exact shrinkage yeah. or the gathering that you need, can't you? I think just to, just for people's confidence as well, um, you know, if you can do as much as you can all on one machine, yeah. um, you know, and I have some matching scissors to uh, Sewing Street. Oh, I wonder where I bought those from. <laughs> Um, so that's one side with the gathering stitch and you always leave a long end because you'll need that. Some people do a, um, a second row of stitching. Um, I suppose I, I would do normally, but I just want to show you how to, how to gather that up. So I'm just going to sew it along the second lot. And some of you may have bunching in your in your stitching. Do you ever get that when you start sewing off and yes. then all the stitches go into like a little bird's nest underneath? Yes, I kind of I'm trying to persuade myself it's decorative. Yeah, <laughs> and me. <laughs> um, I deliberately did that to show you not how how not to yeah. do it. Um, so the the best tip is if you just get the two threads, pull it on behind and just hold it there. just until you've done a few stitches so it's out the way and then you can let go and then that won't happen. 
That's useful as well if you're starting to sew right on the edge of a piece of fabric. You know, sometimes yeah. it can just disappear inside your feet. Oh, it can. So that helps to pull it out as well. It's a good habit to get into. It is. So there we have it. So that's our second row, or second bit of the gathering stitches. So the stage that we're at, we're, we're not actually going to gather it at this stage because when we put the top and the bottom together, you will find again that the, the bottom half is a lot smaller than the top half. That's right. because we need to gather it and then make sure it all fits, fits into place. Okay. So that's what we need to do with the, the front bit. Just to let you know, I've got about 20 minutes left. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Rachel's gone into fast forward now. <laughs> quick, 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 quick. We've got loads of time. <laughs> you can make a top in 20 minutes. <laughs> Any questions, by the way, remember it's sewing, uh, studio at sewingstreet.com if you want to drop us an email. Nice to hear from you. I've had a couple of emails in the show. Um, sorry, who was that? Ger Geraldine. Hi, Geraldine. Um, she says she's enjoying the demo. You're a natural, Rachel. Oh, thank Very you. Very relaxed. And she wants to see more of you. Oh, Does that lovely. mean you want her to wear the shorts in the next one? Oh, my Mickey Mouse ones. Is that the ones you want me to wear? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, John's messaging as well. Morning, John. Um, he says, he also says that you're a natural, enjoying the show. But thank you very much. Very informative, he says. Oh, you've got the John seal of approval. Is that John Cole Morgan? That is. John! <laughs> Hiya! He did say hugs to me, he wants to give me a hug, but when social distancing over, We'll have all the hugs we can. I didn't get that this morning. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> it, will, it will be the shorts next time, John, just to warn you. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the back piece. And again, between the two needles, we've got the gathering, which is then going to be your gathering round the back. Right. right for the fitting and again we won't gather that until we've joined the two pieces together okay so that's the first bit that I actually wanted to show you so the second bit is this um, we've then put the two right sides together so still no gathering at the moment no no gathering at the moment it will come into play um, once you've actually stitched uh, once we're ready to put the bottom of the top together. <laughs> so you can see these two notches, that's why this is so important. So you see those two notches actually go together. It is like putting together the piece of a jigsaw puzzle, It really it? is. Um, normally what I do is I, when I put the two notches together, I'll just put a little pin in there just to secure that. And that's the only notch that you've got right up to the end of that sleeve. Oh, you put a few pins in just to hold it. Your favourites, by the way, are the ochre um, and the red flowers on the green. They're very different weights, aren't they? They're both stretch. Yeah. But this one's finer. I would imagine you to yeah. drape. Not floatier. That would yeah. be pretty. Yeah. Barbecue weather. Notice my pattern just fell on the floor and I'm just leaving it. Gary can pick <laughs> it up later. <laughs> no, we can. In our new studio, <laughs> we'll have pattern picker uppers. Everything. Ooh. Yeah, all, all that going oh, on. Oh, wow. So when are you in again? 9th of August. Oh, we'll still be here then. I think we're September. We'll and the in. 23rd. Oh. Oh, and what are you doing? I don't know. Making the tea, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't care because they're all such nice people here. They are nice here, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. It, even the jewellery maker people next door who can be very noisy at times. Yeah, I was just chatting to them. They're very the... nice people. Oh, lovely. Hmm. Well, it's Sunday, they have parties there and everything. Do at, they? At a distance, of course. Why yeah. didn't you tell me that before? <laughs> I'd have come early. What, what do you think we do when we come off air? Yeah. We've got the buffets arriving as we speak. Champagne oh. will be available. Oh. Is Gary driving? 
He is, yeah, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I've put, now what I've done, I, um, on this machine, you will have it on most machines where it's not just an ordinary zigzag stitch, it looks like a bit of lightning, if that makes sense, sort yep. of like a slanted v, um, a zigzag. That is the best one to use for the, for the um, knitted fabric. So I'm just going to sew down, and it does take a little bit longer. But it's worth it, isn't it? Because oh, we don't want the stitches cracking. No, and the thing is, you you um, let's just just change that just a tad, so it goes slightly longer. I think you can turn the speed up a bit as well if you want to. It's not on this point. I toned it down for free motioning in the last time. I just hope I don't end up over there in a minute <laughs> with an extra speed. <laughs> There we go. Let's put my foot down now. It's quiet though, isn't it? It's a beautiful machine. machine. Yeah, I have to remind, remind Gary how just a f in a few weeks it'll be Christmas again. Just saying. FYI. Just saying. How many machines have you got? Um. Is it how many machines have I got, or how many machines does Gary know I've got? That's two different questions. <laughs> <laughs> is is he watching? Oh, how many machines? How many no, uh, no, that's a, uh, no. Honestly, no. I've got. <laughs> well, my husband's a guitarist, and how we have this joke. Have yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so I, he says, somebody says to me, "How many guitars has Gary got?" And I said, "Well, the ones that I know are." But um, but you have to ask Gary. How many guitars he's actually got? <laughs> he hides them in the cupboard. He hides them <laughs> in the loft. And, and then, then when he brings I them down and says, "This old thing, yeah, I've had it for years." He brings them out when he goes out um, gigging, and I say to him, "I haven't seen that guitar. Oh, I've had it for ages." Now, what women say that about their dresses? <laughs> <laughs> but he's a wonderful man, so I forgive him. He's got a lot of patience with me. So you've avoided the question there, Rachel. Yes, and back to the question that you originally <laughs> asked me. I have got um, a Singer machine, which is my, um, I would say it's probably my workhorse, really. Um, and um, so I've got that. I've got a couple of brother ones. Um, and... But my best machine, of course, is the Elna. Really? Yeah, on, I'm not just joking. It is my go-to machine, especially for bridal wear, because sometimes it can get quite thick, as you can imagine, with layers of frills. And um, last year, I, I ordered a dress. Oh, it was a job and a half, to be honest. But it was a, the girl was lovely. Um, but she'd gone into a, a shop, and all I can say to you, I think she was missold the dress. Oh. And it was a size 18, and she was a size 10. Can you believe that, Debbie? I felt sorry for the yeah. girl. So yeah. you always, I always put myself out for girls if I think that they're in that position, because it's their wedding day. So I literally had to strip the top of the dress completely, oh. unpick all the lace, look, sequins, everything, all over the top. It had an abundance of frill layers on the bottom um, and then I had to lay it all out on the floor and then piece it all together and taking all the side all the seams and oh it was a job and a half um, but she looked absolutely stunning on her wedding day and when you see a girl a girl smile like that on her wedding day you know you've done your job oh. I was um, a singer launched a um, a black version of a, a limited edition and version sewing machine a few years ago when I was working for a different shopping channel. Um, and when you go into the break, you introduce what were you doing in the next hour to encourage people to stay. And I, without even thinking about it, said, "Join me in the next hour. I've got a sexy singer coming up." <laughs> I don't know what they were expecting, no. Barry White or somebody in the studio. <laughs> Darius. <laughs> I only know Barry White Darius songs. Darius was a baby then. <laughs> Good gracious. <laughs> He's very 
very tall, actually, Darius. He's like six foot six. I saw him in Swindon. Did you? Yes, and he jumped off the stage. I thought he was jumping towards me. <laughs> Come on, Darius. Yeah, and I went, Darius. <laughs> and he went. <laughs> I love you, Darius. Oh. oh. <laughs> then you have Darius, to. Darius, what are you doing, Darius? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we went to. We were meant to be sewing. Um, but we, Gary and I went to a concert um, in Oxford and with that word for life. <laughs> oh, gosh, I don't know if I can tell you this, but I'm not laughing. Oh, we went to Nano Star. Oh, my gosh. Um, anyway, we went to this concert and there was sort of like a rockabilly. A band, absolutely fabulous they were. And um, anyway, they had this drummer who's called, is he called Skinny Jim or something? <laughs> something, something like that. Anyway, with 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 um with uh, rockabilly, they stand up to play the drums. You see, and they go oh, right. <laughs> a little bit like that. Um, and um, <laughs> anyway, he was he was um, they did something or other on the stage, and he he always comes over to the edge of the stage and plays up to the crowd and he stepped too far and he fell off, <laughs> he, he fell off the stage and my, Gary and I, we went <laughs> and we didn't even think of saying, is he alright? <laughs> and then people were starting to say, oh my God, and then everybody, <laughs> went, then everybody was going round the stage and I went, oh my God, Gary, I don't think he's, <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> Did you think of asking if he was dead? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I said, Gary, I, said, oh, I think he's dead. <laughs> Gary said, oh, well, he so wasn't Gary right said, right. So Gary said, oh my God. <laughs> so anyway, the next, because of course there was quite a bit of, a bit of crowd. <laughs> and then... Um, and then the next minute we saw he'd he'd obviously got lifted up off the floor, <laughs> luckily, and um, and then he but he was limping off, <laughs> like that, and his arm was like this, so he'd obviously fallen on his side, but I think he was off playing in the. But they had to cancel a few dates, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Bate, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if you're watching Skinny Dream, that's 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 really sad. Yes. It was very funny. <laughs> I'm glad you're better now, Skinny Jim. I honestly do. Yeah, I'm sorry I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> anyway, back to back to the job. Uh, nine minutes left. Nine <laughs> minutes left. Oh, we'll stop talking so much. Ages, later. ages. <laughs> anyway, on the back of if you choose the back of the mm -hmm. of the garment, okay, you can see we've got two notches. So have a look at. This is the neck band, I should have explained, sorry. So if you have a look at that and you think, that's the neck, that's the neck band. Oh, we've cut the cast. The Do you see what I'm wrong. saying? So yeah. it looks as though it's not going to be big enough to be put in, but it is. So <clears throat> if, you, if you match up the notches there, there's one. Second notch there. Now you've got these as well. These these have to be matched up with the shoulders because otherwise you won't have them going. Because then at least uh, then as well, you can see how much you've got to stretch that. Can you see? To get an even stretch all the way round. But it doesn't make it gather, does it? It's not. No, it doesn't make it gather mm -hmm. because it's a stretch knit. Um, it won't gather. You have to feed all of that through the neck band. Yeah, yep, you do. Oh. I'm still crying over <laughs> Slim Jim. Oh, Poor it's Slim Jim. Poor Slim Jim. Not Skinny Jim. Sorry, sk sorry, Slim. Slim Jim. She was laughing like when you fell over. She thought you were dead. <laughs> And now she's still got your name wrong. Well, the reason I, I didn't do anything, Slim Jim, was because I was mortified. Absolutely yeah, well, mortified. He could have been as well. Yeah, I think he was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly think he was. Maybe he thought he was dead as well. I don't, I don't know. 
anyway. <laughs> um, right, so that's that's part of that on there. So I'm just going to just show you how we stretch that round. So the neck. <clears throat> So you can see if we stretch it ourselves, we get a really, really nice finish around the neck. And going round the neck, you only have three eighths of an inch. All right. Because we don't really want to open up the neck so wide that you have a scooped neck like that, <laughs> which could happen. So you've got many wedding dresses on the go at the moment? Yes, I've got about 22 in my Ooh, studio. Really? Yeah. Have you got plenty of time? Yeah, oh yeah, I always give myself plenty of time. Not That's not making from scratch, that's alterations. Okay. Yeah, so, um, and of course, um, brides, uh, some of those I'm guessing, and I do think that they will be postponing their weddings like a lot of um, brides at the moment. Yeah. I do feel so sorry for them. Um, so, um, but they're all rebooking with me for next year, the ones that have postponed, because um, I, I sort of sew for quite a big um, national wedding company. Okay. And um, so, of course, they give me all my, all the, all the brides, um, I nearly got that wrong. There we go. Uh, they give me all my work. So brides go in to purchase their dresses and then as soon as they come out of the shop, they book me to do the alterations because um, you do have to book well in advance yeah. because I do get really booked up. Um, and obviously you need the time in between to do a good job. Do you get invited to many of the weddings? I have done, yeah. And I've actually been invited to help with the weddings, do All the bride right. up and they've been nice. Aww. And I had a string of families actually um, last year. I had two uh, twin sisters. They were oh, they were lovely, and uh, they one of the girls wanted her train completely cut off. I mean that is a big job, completely cut yeah. off. So it was like a ball gown. Wow. So of course I was left with all this fabric, and she brought in her little daughter who was oh she's a dear little soul, and she was into her dollies. So I rang the bride and said, look, I'd like to make her a little dolly dress. Oh because she had a bridesmaid's dress, so I made a replica of her bridesmaid's Aww, dress lovely. for the dolly. And um, anyway, she said we were going to buy her a dolly uh, as a present for being a bridesmaid. So I did all the ribbon on the side and just, it was like a little miniature ball gown, Aww. but shorter. And um, she made a little video of it for me, of this little <laughs> girl opening the present. <laughs> so have I, how long have I got, Debbie? Um, you've got six minutes, 40 seconds. Oh, please. I have to be precise. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, we have to um, stitch three-eighths of an inch down. Move that out of the way. When we got married, which is... Um, Twenty, almost twenty-three years ago now. Um, Gosh, we um, the bridesmaids had teddy bears with bows that made out of the same fabric as the dresses were. Oh, um, it's just those little touches, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, my youngest son was uh, two at the time, and um, he had a um, a toy car, a big toy car, with what? Well, just, just press your foot down. Should go. What have you done? You spiked, you spiked yourself. I did, yes. Never Didn't mind. Well, that's what that plaster was for, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It knew I was have coming. I moved it. Found the plaster in the studio, um, so that was asking for trouble, wasn't it? It was. Oh, never you mind. spiked yourself as well. Yeah, never mind. We soldiers have to carry on. Be brave soldier. Yeah, we have to carry on. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, I'll just make sure I just don't touch the fabric. So I just want to show you, really, just sewing along here. And still with the with the lightning stitch. Look into the plaster. I think we're going to need it. Yeah, I just don't want to get blood over the sewing machine. <laughs> so you didn't think you'd be saying that on Sewing Street this morning, did you? No. Mind you, if they um if I damage it too much, I might have to take it. Well, it, yeah, you'd have to buy it. <laughs> 
but Gary's here. Yeah, um, yeah. We, the, the pattern's going really quickly, um, by the way. Um, there's an awful lot of you ordering the pattern in your basket that you haven't checked out yet. Ooh. So I would uh, proceed to check out with, um, with ultimate speed, if that's okay, before we have to sell out the pattern. Um, these shows, if you weren't aware, will be on our YouTube channel. So go to YouTube and pop in Sewing Street. So if you've missed anything, or if you want to fast forward the giggly bits, then um, have a look on YouTube either later on this afternoon or tomorrow morning. We have giggled quite a bit, haven't we? <laughs> I hope I don't get you into trouble. Oh, I've gone past caring. Yeah. <laughs> Pauline's messaged in. Hi, Pauline. Um, just to say. Oh, Debbie and Rachel are a very entertaining duo, by the way. <laughs> and would love to see more demos with us together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she's loving the top. That's the demonstration. Um, I'll have to draft you up a contract, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't do, I don't do contracts. <laughs> um, Pauline likes a little bit of Sunday morning sewing as well. So that's a bit of sewing and banter, isn't it? We have, we have queues of our designers now applying for Sunday mornings, but we're just too busy, I'm afraid. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Apart from cheese and wine mornings, of course. Oh, I mean, yes. Oh, well, that's like Sundays, if, really. if we get invited to one of those. You... <laughs> <laughs> but without the cheese. I might have time. <laughs> Do you want to borrow a helicopter so you can get there quickly? Oh, oh no, I can't bear heights. <laughs> <laughs> just even the thought of going up in the sky <laughs> We took a helicopter. Oh. It was my husband's big birthday a few years ago. Um, we took a helicopter flight over London, so we went, oh. went to, to see the sights. And <laughs> it was the first time we'd met my um, my daughter's boyfriend, so that was great. Hello, nice to meet you. Up we go. <laughs> then realised he's terrified of heights and flying. <laughs> and then my youngest lad, who was at the front, he's terrified of flying. It just made me laugh because he was holding on really tightly. <laughs> Don't you know if we're going to go down? Holding on isn't going to make any difference. <laughs> just hold on all the way down there. <laughs> Would you know, years ago, this is how bad I am, right? I, we went, I took my daughter, Jenny, um, to a family, um, like a fairground thing, but it was actually for employees. Right. So we went along as a family, and um, they had like an enormous adult big wheel that I wouldn't even go near. And they had a little kiddies one. So I said, Jenny, I said, I'll go on that with you, love. I said, you know, I said, I'll, I'll go on that with you. Well, I was halfway up and I felt sick. <laughs> and by that time, you probably be at head height. I did. And then when it came to getting off, I must have looked dreadful because the, the man at the end, he said, you're fine. <laughs> I said, no, I was just going off. <laughs> I'm terrible. Absolutely terrible. I can hardly walk across a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. <laughs> and we haven't got steps in the studio anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why I felt giddy earlier. <laughs> you didn't fall down a step on the way in, did you? No, I, um, I caught my foot. But not to worry. <laughs> I just went... <laughs> So I thought I'd just do a little bit of slapstick on my way in. <laughs> and then she right. bleeds all over the sewing machine. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So <laughs> it's not too bad, actually. Right, there we go. So that's the next sewn on. So any pins you've got left in, obviously take them out, because that will hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do you know, Rachel, we're just about out of time. Uh, so if I just... What you, what you have to do is you just literally have to turn that round, bring it over double like that, okay? Put your pin in all the way round and then just stitch it on the top all the way round. What I did as well, I actually, st what they call stitch in the ditch. So all yeah. that you do there is you just put your stitching in on the seam okay. and give it a press. All right, thank you very much. So oh, one final message from Karen. <laughs> Please keep Debbie and Rachel together for dressmaking. She says it's lots of fun and she's had lots of useful tips as well. Oh, thank you, so, Karen. Do you know what? 
<laughs> it's the 9th you're back again. 9th of August. What? Oh, that's my wedding anniversary. That's 2024, 23. I can't remember. <laughs> um, what day is that? Sunday. All right. Yay. I'm not quite sure who I'm on with. Oh, yeah, that'll be me. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've bagged all the Sundays. I love a Sunday morning. <laughs> no, that'll be lovely. I can't wait to work with you again. Oh, thank lovely. you so much. No, thank you ever so much, Debbie. It's <laughs> no, been it's absolute right. fun, which is what sewing should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah enjoy it. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, now have a look on the uh, on the fans page because, oh, she's gone. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't realise you were talking to me. Sorry. Can't wait to get out of here now. Um, you've had loads of messages on the fans page. So go, go and have a quick look there. And meanwhile, I'll give you a recap of everything we've got for you in the show, but have a look at uh, the different ways to order. I'm off to look at... Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers Landing Page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the Watch Live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Pat sent a message in for us. Um, she says, Rachel, you are a joy to watch. So natural, like having a friend in the room. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, we've had loads of comments today, it's very nice. Let me give you a reminder of the pattern that um, Rachel was using for the top behind me here. She's turned her back on us now. The, the, the mannequin is just so embarrassed. <laughs> She's <coughs> put her nose in the corner of the room like the naughty mannequin. Um, this is the pattern. Um, it's £7.99. pence. Size-wise, again, as a quick reminder, we go on the smallest size on the bust is 30 and a half up to the largest size which is 46 inches. It's a simple top to make, there are no closures, there's no zips, there's no darts, um, it's loose fitting, it's flattering and it is perfect for the jersey fabrics that we have for you on the show as well. So that's just £7.99, it's been really busy for the pattern though so check out your baskets while we have the stock. Fabric wise, this is lovely. This has been your favourite so far, which is the red floral. It is a jersey, they're all jerseys here, but they're different weights. So you've got a nice bit of stretch in this one, but it's quite fine, so you have a fluidity. So that is going to gather beautifully, it's going to drape around those sleeves perfectly. Your two metres is plenty enough to make the largest size, making the smallest size, then you've got fabric left over you can make something else with. Or if you just love the fabric on its own and you don't want to go for the pattern, then feel free, it's £29.99. So that's red flowers on green jersey. I'd say it was grey myself. I wouldn't have called that green, but there you go. Then we have <clears throat> the blue stripe, which is a little bit nautical, but nice. Um, that is £29.99 again for the two metres. So that's the lighter weight of jersey. I'm saying lighter weight, it's lighter weight compared to the, um, the sparkly ones. It's not so lightweight it's going to be see-through, but loads of stretch in that one. And then we have the glittery ones. So are we looking at the, the blue one first, which goes very nicely with denim, I think. So this is one that the top behind me is made out of and is brushed on the back. It's got this really lovely, soft, fleecy, comfortable, snuggly feel. So cooler evenings maybe, or if you're making something for Christmas time, that would be perfect. And it's a little bit of a shimmer. So we've got 10% Lurex in there which gives it its sparkle. The rest of it is cotton, so it's nice and breathable and comfortable and washable as well. That's £29.99, again for two metres. 145 wide, so you've got a good width of fabric with these as well. This is the ochre, which is the most popular out of the sparkles. So this is the one that Rachel is working with. 
Um, and again, it's subtle, isn't it? It's not all bling and sequins. It's, it's very elegant, really classy and very subtle. It's shimmery rather than sparkly, I think. That's £29.99 again, 145 wide. And then finally is the pink. And again, it's subtle um, with silver lurex on this one, which gives it a kind of a, a grey shimmer. Um, and again, that's £29.99. All of these glittery ones have got the, the fleecy bits, like the kind of weight of a sweatshirt. So a little bit more wintry, cool evenings for those ones, I reckon. Um, could you please, I'm going to ask you, I know I'm going on, I do apologise. Lots of you have the patterns in your baskets, but you haven't checked out. And now the way that it works, until you go through to check out, just like you're in a supermarket, it's not yours. Um, and unlike with a supermarket, if somebody comes on the phone lines and orders, they will take this out of your basket and give it to the person on the phone. Um, so they take priority when we, when we get close to running out of stock. So just to make you aware, if you want to go ahead and purchase the pattern, please could you do that now if you're on the website. If you're on the phone lines 0800 001 4433, then just give us a ring and uh, we'll get that process for you as soon as possible. Now then, in the next, we've got, it's all about me. In the next hour, we've got the panels. So I'm going to make an apron um, from my cow creamer panels, but we've got the bobbins panels and the sewing machine panels, which you may have seen before. So if you've seen them before and you think, oh, I should have ordered that, then maybe have a look in the next hour. I'll see you again in a couple of minutes. Christmas is going to be here before we know it. And as with every year, we want to make sure that we get our makes ready in time for gifting on the big day or for decorations in the lead up. We're here to help with our Christmas make shows, starting with our three day event on Friday the 31st of July until Sunday the 2nd of August. And we'll be live for five hours each day too. Expect lots of festival quilting, FPP, dressmaking and needle felting to make all your decorations, advent calendars, cushion covers and so much more. We'll have our expert tutorials from some of our favorite guest designers and a fabulous competition exclusively for our Sewing Street family. Keep your eyes peeled on our email newsletter, Facebook and Instagram for more details in the run-up. And don't forget to tune in from 8am to 1pm on Friday the 31st of July until Sunday the 2nd of August on Freeview Channel 74, Sky 670 or on our YouTube channel. Hi, I'm Rosie Wells. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits, feeling good, it's about looking great, making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside, and it's about the life that you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.
Hello, my name's Rachel Ilsley. Let me show you around my beautiful sewing studio, Magnolia. My sewing studio is in Wooten Bassett and on a daily basis, I alter and dress make for bridal customers. All my brides are absolutely wonderful. You can see I make waistcoats, bridesmaids, dresses, um, anything really they ask me for. Now my sewing story started as an adopted child and my adoptive mother was also a seamstress, so she taught me everything I know. So I feel extremely lucky to be able to now be doing this as a profession. Also very proud am I to be now a part of the Sewing Street family. And I so look forward to being on the shows with all of your support, which I know that I have. My claim to fame, well, I did appear on another sewing channel in last November, on the 7th of November. Some of you may have watched it. Um, and so that was my little claim to fame. So I've just literally risen from a full-time insurance job to sewing as a profession. I look forward to seeing you all. Bye. Hello, welcome back again. Now this is the final live hour on Sewing Street this morning. Um, we've got another hour coming up after this one, but that, that, that's going to be a repeat probably from one of the shows yesterday. So this is the last time we're live. So if you wanted to come through and ask any questions, say hello, uh, send in any pictures, let us know what you've been making, then, then do feel free. It would be lovely to hear from you. You can email the studio at studio at sewingstreet.com or you can send a message on our Facebook page. I've got that open with me at the moment, and that is Sewing Street TV. Or you can go and join our uh, Facebook fans page if you like. But I've got the I've got this one open at the moment. So if you want to talk to me directly, then that's the place to be. Alan's finished his V-neck. What's that? Four years? Must be. Um, pictures, Alan, please of your V-neck line. Nice to see that. Okay. We've, I'm surrounded by cows. <laughs> this is the um, one of the newest um, panels that I've made up for you. And these are, oh gosh, there's so many of them. Are we looking at the actual, let's look at the panel first. Right, and that's coming up in a bit. It's all my stuff in here. There's loads of it. Um, let, let me show you what you can make first of all. These are based on photographs of a collection of Victorian cow creamers that I have. Um, they're all named on the panels. I didn't actually name them, um, but they've got very appropriate names. The, these are, so they're actual photographs of the creamers. They look exactly like this. They're taken from photos. Um, Tom, who is our designer at Sewing Street, has digitized them and then put them onto a printed background. So these are very close to my heart. I've been collecting cow creamers for an awful long time now, and it's just lovely to see them on here. Um, I'll show you, it's on the other panel, I think, the one that I started off and the, the reason why I started collecting these. I think just, collections just kind of happen, don't they? So on the panel, you will have uh, the fabric. These are all um, labelled as well on the panel so you can see which piece is which. Um, there's bias binding. You have the backing fabric, this time it's a pink gingham. Then you will have the, oh and there's the lining inside the pockets as well. So that's floral, those are the flowers taken from the pattern on the cow. And then you will also have the pot holder. The instructions with step-by-step -step instructions are included as well. And there's the tea cosy. And there she is again. And this floral design was used to create the flowers on the fabric on the inside. Now what I'm thinking is, don't really see that, do you? So if you used your own fabric on the inside, then you've got, these are already cut out in a teapot shape, uh, in a, sorry, tea cosy shape, so you can't really do anything else with them, but you could make two tea cosies with it. On the pot holder, if you used your own fabric on the back, you can make another one. And the same with this one, if you use your own fabric, you could make another one with the floral um, handles and then another one with the check. You'll need more bias binding though. In the kit, we're including enough thermalam to make all of these. If you're making more, then you're going to need to order more. So that is a heat resistant slash reflective um, uh, wadding. 
There's your full step-by-step -step instructions with lots and lots of photographs, so they're really easy to follow. We don't do difficult. And then this is the actual panel. Oh, that's the green one. We've got two colours, got green or pink, so this is the green option. It's huge. I'm hearing move everything out the way. <laughs> so that's what you're guessing. So the diagonal strips there are your bias binding, they are cut on the bias. This is superior weight of cotton poplin. Poplin? Pop poplin. So it's a really nice, dense, tight weave. I'm really pleased with the quality of this. It was very important to me to get good quality. Um, oh, they're all labelled. So this is your um, tea cosy lining, then you've got the oven mitts, that's your uh, pot holder. And this one here is a spare cow. So we're just filling up the space so you can use that as a piece of applique, maybe on an apron that you have already. But the little lady that was responsible, in fact it was my mother that was responsible for this collection. Is she on a big one? Not my mother, the, the cow. Oh, you wouldn't want to see my mother on here. She'd love it. She's quite a character, my mother. And I'm so pleased to think I'm taking after her. Um, this is the one. So that's the very first cow that I ever had, which did belong to my mother. And she inherited it from her grandmother. So it's all a bit broken. It's been stuck together very badly with Evo stick. Um, so it's not a perfect jug, but that's the one that started the whole collection. Because when you've got one of something and then you see another one, you oh, I'll have that because I've already got one, I'll collect them. And then people start buying things for Christmas and then you get these really silly looking ones. I think that's a Laura Ashley one. But it looks like a llama look. It's, it's very aloof, that cow. So look, looking down on you. Yes, would you like some cream in your tea? Um, so yeah, they're, they're, all, they're all little characters. Oh, the names as well, I was saying, wasn't I? These three are Daisy, Dorothy and Penelope. I don't know which one's which, because again, Tom named those. And you've got a couple of um, handmade buys as well. So if you're giving those as gifts, then... And you can do... Oh, I want to talk to you about that. Um, selling things. I am very happy. I'd rather you didn't buy this and sell it, as it is. But if you wanted to make up the items and then sell them for your own gain or for charity or for whatever you want to, I would be over the moon if you did. Because if you can make a little bit of money out of something, then you're more likely to come back and shop, aren't you? So any of my designs, this isn't the same for anything on Sewing Street, but anything that I've designed, I'm very happy for you to sell the finished product. And book-wise, I did notice on uh, the Sewing Streets fan page last week, somebody was talking about would they be able to sell projects made from my books. Uh, and then there was a whole discussion saying, well, Debbie says you can, but in the book it says to go through the publishers. Um, just basically, any book that you buy will have some kind of clause in there saying that if you want to sell for charity or sell for personal profit, you need to get the permission from the publishers to do that. What then happens is the publisher will get in touch with the author and it's up to the author whether you sell their products or you don't. Some will say no. I'm saying do what you like with them, sell as many as you like. So although it says to go through the publishers in the book, I am giving you permission to sell whatever you like from any of the books that I've written. That's me personally. Um, if you're looking at dressmaking patterns and to sell from those, the majority of them are no, you can't. So always read the small print. But if it's got my name on it, you do what you like. You go make yourself some money out of it. I'll be really pleased. So that's the, that's the green. The pink is, it's different cows on the pink, and I'll show you that because that saves me getting the whole thing out, but I shall give you their names as well. I must ask Tom what, who he thought each one was. Um, so this one is Bessie, Clarabelle, and Betty Sue. A Betty Sue sounds like a Texan cow to me. I have a, have a few moments of going Texan for some reason. Um, this one isn't actually a cow creamer, it's a vase. But I just loved its silly expression. It, it's so 1950s, isn't it? Um, so you've got a different collection of cows on this one to the green one. And again, all of that. A few £34.99 includes your thermal in, includes your instructions, your step-by-steps with the photographs, and then all of those panels as well, which, again, I'm hoping you're going to stretch out to take a little bit further because you can easily make two sets if you add a, a few of your own extras. Talking of a few of your own extras, 
we've put these together as well. So this is the green. So maybe you, you're quite happy with your oven gloves and your tea cosy or you don't want to make those, but you love the cow fabric. I've made these panels too. Oh, we've only got five of these left. It would be nice if they were reprinted because they are printed here in the UK. Um, the only thing is, I know the printers have an awful lot on at the moment with Christmas coming up and what. So um, it's not like we can get these printed again tomorrow. They'll have to go into a whole long list of people, I would imagine. Um, so this one, now then, I have thought this through because I wanted you to be able to make lots of projects. So initially I was thinking, right, we'll have a half a metre of fabric. And I was like, it's not that much you can do with a half a metre that way, but if I do half a metre this way, you could make an apron like that. So that was my thinking. So that, that's from the pink one. This is the green. So you've got a long piece of fabric going that way. You could cut it in half and make a, cuddler, a cuddler. You can make a cuddler. I have no idea what one of those is, but you could make a couple of cushion covers out of it. Then these are, I thought, a pocket. If you make a pocket, you still have five left. So I started making a table runner in the, in the previous show, which is at the back of me at the moment. I quilted that. And then you've got a couple of strips here as well, which on the apron I use these for the straps. Um, but again, you can just make smaller pieces with those. And these flowers have come from Aloof. She looks like a... She's, she can be Penelope, because that's a posh, posh name, isn't it? So there's Penelope's posies in that pattern. And you've got the grey check there as well. So lots of you have bought these already. So I'd like to, like to see what you've been doing with them. Maybe you've got a, a coordinated kitchen. I still haven't, you know. They're my cows. I've got them all. They hang up in my kitchen all across the, um, the window. We've got, uh, we live in quite an old cottage. And our kitchen was, it was, it was a bakery once upon a time, so we've still got the original ovens in there. Um, but it's one of those cottages, you know where the walls start to bow out a little bit? Um, and you see these crosses and S-shapes in cast iron on the outside of buildings. There's a bar that goes straight through the centre of the house and they tie, they heat up the bar. If you didn't know, they heat up the bar in the middle, um, that's heating up the bar, and then turn the edge bits so it holds the house together. So we've got a few of those in our house and one of them is right above the kitchen window with holes in it and that's where all my cows hang. So that's what I was going, getting around to telling you. So yeah, they all hang across the, um, the bar in my kitchen. We're having a new kitchen. Two people came round to give us quotes for this kitchen and both of them said, that's going to have to go, I'm afraid. Yeah, but the house will fall down if that goes. Next. Um, that's the green. This is the pink. Shan't get it all out. Um, but you have the different selection of cows on there if you wanted to go for the pink option. And that's only £19.99. So, long time in the making, these as well. It's taken, taken a long time to bring these to you. The fabric's lovely. I'm really, really pleased with the quality. So, no instructions with those, but you, you do what you like with them. So, you could make matching things to go with your... Um, your kitchen set. Um, you could do your mug hugs and mug rugs and coffee coffee pot cosies. And of course your aprons, you could make a half apron. Should we do a half apron? We could do a waist apron, couldn't we? We'll do that in a minute. We'll have a go at that. Right, so that's those. Um, should we have a look at bobbins? What have I got here? Right, the same. I didn't realise how busy I'd been. That's the sewing machine set. Right, bobbins. These again don't come with instructions because it's just fabric. But I have seen sewing machine dust, dust covers and sewing mats made out of these. I have seen cushions and cushion covers um, to go in your sewing room. Little drawstring bags and pouches. Storage cubes are ideal. And um, this one's uh, the lilac. So two strips of the fabric, all of the bobbins have got my name on them. And that, that's not an ego thing. Um, it's because of copyright. We couldn't put the original, cause these are my bobbins that I collect. And we couldn't use the actual branding on them. So they got changed to my name. Um, and then there's these panels. I haven't put these together in a way that you would just quilt it because I didn't think you would with bobbins. 
So I've got two large pieces which you can use as pockets, you can make cubes and then you've got the smaller pieces there as well. I have made storage cubes out of those before and it works really well. And I specifically asked for a large board around the edge of them because I'm thinking if you're going to cut these out individually, you'll cut halfway down and then you're going to hem and I still wanted you to see some of the lilac around the edge. So that's why there's such a wide border so you can actually use it. So there's method in my madness. There's a, there's a reasoning behind all of these. But little girls' dresses, who would have thought, made out of bobbins. And again, you've got nice quality. I've earmarked the best quality fabrics. I have a reputation, you know, I've got to keep that up. So that's the lilac bobbins. Then we have the green. So these are the same, same colours as the cows, actually. Um, but we also have the same machine dust cover and drawstring bag sets in the same colour. So if you've already got those and you wanted to make something else coordinating for your sewing room, then you can do. So that's the green. I think that was the first one to sell out last time. All right, that's that. They're all folded up very differently. And then finally is the grey. Come here. Which is that one? So the bobbins are from my collection of old bobbins. The sewing machines are from my collection of old sewing machines as well. So the red one there is um, a Vulcan. Um, then I've got my Jones, my Novum is one of my favourites. This one's more about the bobbins, but we have put a, a few sewing machines in there as well. That's actually the right size. Um, life size with the bobbins next to it, they, those are all on one photo. So it just shows you how small that little sewing machine is. Little ditty one. But nice actually, when I brought you these before, I've had quite a few messages from people saying, I used to sew on one of those machines. And actually my, uh, my little three years in a couple of weeks granddaughter is, um, is learning to sew on that as well. So actually, daughter needs a new sewing machine. I promised her a new sewing machine. Don't know what to get. <laughs> Not a hope. <laughs> uh, right, so we've, we've seen that. Um, I'll put that in, that's not in the wrong place. The sewing machine kit. Now then, this one is a big kit. You'll be able to make the sewing machine dust cover that you see here. I've got different colours for you. And again, I'm thinking of ways to make your pennies go a little bit further because you've got the two panels for the top of the cover. You can then use this as a mat because it's one of those that ties at the side, it's not fitted. But look at the linings. You don't see those. So if you used your own fabric on the inside, then, and these are pockets as well on the front. But if you used your own fabric, then you've got more fabric that you can make something else with. Let me show you what I mean. Um, H640 is included because you need that to pad. You're getting five metres of ribbon. You can have loads left over there and just step-by-step -step instructions. But you're ready for this. This is huge. Right, I'll start at the top. So we've got the pockets. You've also got a drawstring storage bag. So that's the drawstring bag. Um, all of the pieces are labelled again, but you could use the lining of the drawstring bag to make another one. You've got all of those bobbins and they go around the top of the drawstring bag. Then there's the linings and down at the bottom here you have the actual sewing machines. It's massive. And the spare bits as well, so over the top here, that machine could be one big piece of applique. That's not necessary for the projects that are on here. Um, you've got my logo if you wanted to use it, and you've got three spare bobbins as well, so you can use those wherever you like. So these could be pockets on the front of your dust cover. Um, they could be four little pin cushions if you use your own fabric. And I've got the purple one. Actually, did I make it up or oh, didn't finish it? But you can quilt them, you could add more embellishments to them. I think they would make a lovely gift. You can give this as a gift if you like as the panel, just don't sell it. Um, but it's a very simple project to make up. If you're looking for, maybe you've got the kids learning how to sew, 
Um, is it PC to call kids kids these days? I always call them the kids. If you're teaching children how to sew, then this is something that only uses straight lines. You're only cutting out squares and rectangles. And what a lovely gift that would make for maybe grandma or granddad if they sew as well. So that to make, you've got plenty of time before Christmas as well to get on with that, haven't you? So all of that is included. A metre of HX40 is plenty enough. You'll have some left over. So that's the lilac. Same deal with the grey. Shan't open it all out. Arms aching now, don't you know? Um, that's the one that's actually made up there as well. And then we have the green as well. So these were the same colour as the bobbins if you wanted to go for a completely coordinated look. That one is the... They're all different machines on the different panels as well. So this one's another child's machine. I've got, got one of those. I've got a black one of those as well. Oh, and then one of my favourites, my fist from Rossman. And the two little Vulcans there as well. But again, we have taken the names off those because... Um, because we have two for copyright. Con you can't just go using people's names, you know. 100% cotton. Uh, my machines, photographed by my husband, digitised and designed into fabric. Um, compatible designs by Tom and printed in the UK as well. Is that it with me? Panels, it's taken me half an hour to get through that lot. I didn't, didn't realise I'd done too, too many. H640 is something that I use a lot, so I just wanted to mention this. Um, in bag making, in things like this, anything that needs a little bit of padding. I wouldn't use it for a quilt, but for homewares. I'd use it on the back of a, um, a cushion cover if I wanted to quilt into that. But it's polyester and it's got knobbly bits on one side which are glueable. There's a lot of this kind of thing on the market. A lot of it is very, very good and some of it isn't so much. Um, but I like the Valiseline. Um, one. I like the Bosa one as well, they do one. But I like the Valiseline because it doesn't wrinkle. Some of them, I shan't mention names, there are two big brands that do similar and you put steam on them by mistake and they just all shrink up. Mere nightmare. This one likes steam and it likes heat. Um, very rarely will I find it wrinkles. If it does while well, it's still warm, peel it off, put it back down and do it all over again. Start ironing from the centre outwards and give, give it steam. It likes steam, it adheres better that way. And you get a metre square. So, um, £9.99, £9 that's really good. That's how much you're getting there. And just like with wadding, if you needed to join pieces together, because I do save almost slithers to join together, um, because it's adhesive, it can butt up against itself, or two pieces can butt up against it. I said butt, which it is a Sunday morning, isn't it? Um, butt up together, or you could do a zigzag stitch across them and sew them together like you would do with the um, with quilt wadding. So again, that's £9.99, pence, but I wanted to show you that because I, I use it a lot. I use it a lot for bags. Right. Um, should we make an apron? Should we do it? All right, don't need that. We've got half an hour to make an apron, haven't we? Should we do a child's apron or should we do a, a big one? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, right. I'll just knock everything over while I'm looking for the fabric that I was going to cut into, which I seem to have lost. That's it's the one that's right next to me. Right, that's that. So, how should we do this? I think I should make a waist apron. I think I might make a waist apron because I've done a full length one. I think I did a child's apron last time, didn't I? I can't remember, I do so much. So, okay. I'm going to need half of this. I'm going to have a pocket on the front and I'm going to put a frill, a frill around it. So just cutting these out. It's easier with um, a rotary cutter, I think, but again, if you've got scissors then it doesn't really matter. Don't rush out and buy a rotary cutter just for this. But you do get a nice clean cut. So I can see the halfway mark because that's where it's actually creased. So 
make sure I'm straight at right angles with the side. And I'm not going to cut into that cow, so I'll do just up to there. And then I'll cut down this side. Oh, I could do my fork pleating method, couldn't I? Right, so that's going to be my apron. And then I think we'll have a frill in the pink, in the check. So that may be a narrow frill. We'll see how we go. I'll do as much as I can. Oops. Have a look on the website, by the way. And I've bamboozled you a little bit with all of these panels. But if you go to, actually, if you go to sewingstreet.com and type Debbie Shaw in the top, you get all manner of things with my name on come up. There's books, there's kits, there's panels. So again, just want the pink one for this. I would normally cut all of them out and then really decide what I'm going to make with them. But I think that for you, they're very kitcheny. I think for the kitchen, these are, these are perfect. And there we go. A little bit more here and then that's that done. Then I'm going to cut this into strips sew them together, iron them in half, and then hope I've got enough to go all the way around my apron. So I've got loads left there as well. Caroline loves the cow fabric. Oh, and grey as well, to match a kitchen. Right, so that's that. How many strips can I get out of this one then? Let's have a look. So I'm asking myself questions, but I always know the answer, so that's fine. Um, so two, four, six, what does that measure? Yeah, I can put two inch strips out of this one. So that'll make inch wide, where have you gone? Um, inch wide ribbon when I fold it in half, which is perfect. There. Can you wear that jewellery make a lot outside? They're, they've just come up air, I think, and they're having their after show parties. They're, they're really noisy. All right. We'll have, we'll have none of this nonsense in the new studio. I'm not bothered about joining these together at a diagonal because um, they're going to be pleated anyway, so it's not like bias binding. So, stitch am I I'm still on that stitch, so we go to that one, and so, and snip. So I'll just, I'll join them all together and then see how far we get. I think there'll be plenty to go around a little apron like that. Might not be enough to do the tie as well to go around the top, but I could do that in the floral fabric, couldn't I? I'm not, I've run out of thread at the bottom, that's why I'm not sewing. Oh, I'll put a, I'll put a beige one in there, doesn't matter, does it? I could do grey, do a beige one. Oops, where did you go? There. So I'll do that bit again, but with thread this time. That one, joy. Okay, it's just these. So what are you sewing at the moment? What have you got on the go? How many projects have you got on the go? I've got, um, I've just finished some projects for a compilation of my half yard books that will be coming out next year, I think. You work ever such a long way in advance with this book writing malarkey. And then I'm doing a book called So Eco-Friendly. And they always do. So you've got lots of time to do it. Oh, by the way, next week, can we have five images for the front cover? Oh, oh, OK. So I'm going to be busy doing that when I get home. Then I'm back here again tomorrow. And there we go. Oh, yesterday I spent most of the day making a little quilt because it's Christmas next week. And I, I didn't realise how quickly 
this month was going because I had to look at my deadlines because this is something for um, for Sewing Street. So I provide all of the step by step instructions, but they've got to get printed and, and edited and all of that malarkey. So yesterday morning, I thought, oh, no, I wonder when I've got to get this done by 27th. Ages yet. But tomorrow, isn't it? So, yeah, so that was me making gift bags and quilts all day yesterday, step by step instructions on photography. Um, See, so it's a bit varied at the moment. I'm not good with deadlines, and not unless they're months ahead. Right, so I'm just folding this in half. It's going to make a little frill. If it was a child's apron, you could probably do a wider one. Oh, that's a, there's a lot there. Oh, we'll have plenty to do this, I'm sure. 12 minutes. We're not going to get an apron finished in 12 minutes, are we? But you'll have an idea of how we're going to do it. And that's that. Okay, don't need that. Don't need that now. I need my fork. That's in my sewing box. I'm going to round the corners of this off because it's a lot easier to cut around or to put pleats around a round corner than a square corner. I'll just do that by eye, if I can find my scissors. There they were, all the time. So I'm going to just curve that off here. So my finished apron is kind of, look, sorry, that size. I'd put a pocket on the front because there's lots of fabric and I can do. But I'm going to put the pleats around here first just to show you how I'm going to do that. They will have a raw edge on the underside, which if you're making an apron for yourself is fine. If you're making it as a gift or for somebody else, I would line the whole thing. So you need two shapes like this, but I've only used half of that panel, so you could use the other half on the opposite side. And then let's get, let's get pleating. So if you haven't seen this, this is clever if you haven't seen this before. Um, I'm going to put... Mm -mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'll just figure out what I said. Fork curved side up. Um, and then I'm going to go into the gap in between the third and fourth prongs. Forks are normally an inch wide. So that goes in there, like so. And then as you're sewing, you flip it over like that. And you, oh, we didn't see that, did you? Let me do that again. So that goes in there like that. And then you'll flip the fork over and it gives you a one inch wide pleat. That'll make more sense when we get going. So I'm sewing quite close to the edge because it's quite a narrow, just catch the end bit there. It's quite a narrow ribbon, this one. So let's fold that there, bring it out and sew. Just catch the end of the pleat and put it in, bring it out, line at the edges and sew. So don't sew too close to where you're making your fold because your fork's going to get in the way. But just making sure that the pleats are lining up. It doesn't have to be perfect. But it's a lot easier than the usual measuring, marking, pinning, tacking. You just kind of get into the flow with it. And I'd go all the way around. Again, this is why it's easier to go around a curve than get into mitering corners and things like that. Um, so you can make wider ones. You could do this actually with the edge of a piece of fabric if you're putting pleats into a skirt or something. It's quite an easy way to do it. And then I'll flip this over. And if I'm not putting a lining in, I'd top stitch all the way around just to make sure that the pleats are going to sit nice and flat. They will open up a little bit when you're going around the curves like this when I turn it over. You get the idea. I'm quite happy that seam there sitting on the back because you won't see this from the front. So that was that was just coincidence, but that's worked out quite nicely. And around we go. It's quite good fun as well. I was thinking you could do bigger pleats with a garden fork. <laughs> with, your, with your cake fork you could do tiny plates. It works though, doesn't it? I'm sure there must be some kind of gizmo that you can buy to do this, but 
I think we've all got forks. <laughs> right, are we doing okay here? Is this, is this getting a bit tedious now watching me go around here? Let me show you the, the frill though. So you've got a really nice neat pleat. So when I've finished, I'll fold that back and then just top stitch all the way around and that's going to help to keep it in place. So shall I count, shall we put the pocket on the front and I'll do this later. Hello Marion. Oh Alison, oh hi Alison. I thought I didn't hear the Alison bit because I was sewing. You're right. Oh, she spent Saturday evening cutting out 100 yards of three quarter inch bias binding. Why? What you doing? Oh, for an oh, is, is Alison going to be bringing her apron kits to us? Well, very thin bias binding. I think we'll go for this one. Um, oh, when's Alison on again? Sorry, Joe. Oh, on Friday. Oh, Christmas on Friday. Lovely. Alison Marion is a very talented designer that works with Sewing Street now. And I'll give you I'll give you one guess as to what she's going to make. How many aprons can you have? Is it um, is it your wrap over apron, Alison? I'm talking to you like you can answer me. One way conversation. Right, that's going to go on the front here. I think it's a little bit deep, so I'm going to fold that right over. I could make that quite a lot smaller. I'll tell you what we'll do as well. We'll round off the corners. So it matches. Oh, Christmas crackers. I'm not, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really, I'm not really, I'm not a fan of Christmas in July. I shouldn't be saying that, should it? It just seems too early. But it kind of gives you a bit of a wake up because oh, I haven't got anything done yet. I'm going to trim that down a little bit more. I want the, the pocket to be a bit narrower than that. So you've got plenty of room. So apparently Jewelry Make had their Christmas in July yesterday. So it, it is a thing, isn't it? Now then. I'm going, to, I'm going to iron this again. I'm going to iron that as well, just so you can have an idea of how we're looking. Again, that will flare out a little bit as we go around the curve. You could gather that a little bit more, actually, if you wanted the, the pleats on the curve to be perfect. And here, right. Now then, hand sewing needle. So I'm kind of prepped. I must have a needle in here somewhere. Probably on the end of here. There we go. Knew there was one there somewhere. Because it can be quite difficult to hem around curves. So this is a quick and easy way. I'm just going to pull some thread out of here. If you have a, um, you can make a curved template out of a piece of card and iron around it, would be useful. Honestly, that was like watching paint dry. But I'm going to just make a quick running stitch around the curve. Just about a quarter of an inch in. So I'm following the curve nice and neatly. Oh, my, my needle's rather large for this fabric. Could have been neat. Yeah, I've left holes in it, look. But it's not to worry, it's, it's not the seam, it's just a curve. Right, and then when you pull this, going to gather up obviously and then you can turn that over and you get a nice even curve so let's pull that a little bit tighter and I'll just put a little knot in there 
and then around, where's my iron, there we go. Just fold in underneath where the stitches are. So it's quite quick, but it's, it's a nice little trick. And then you get a really nice curve. If I try to do that without, it gets a little bit, it gathers up a little bit and you tend to get straight lines. It's doable, but it's an awful lot, look, it's not very good at all, is it? It's an awful lot easier to just take the time to put a little bit of gathering in there. And you don't burn your fingers. That's not so bad, that'd be fine. Oh, look, no, it is bad, isn't it? Oh, do it together. You're going to do it, Deborah, do it properly. <laughs> I can hear my mother talking to me. Don't rush it, do it properly. Align it flat again. And do the same again. So again, if this was um, an apron that I was selling or if I was gifting it, I'd, I'd put a lining on the pocket as well so there aren't any raw edges, in which case you don't need to do this um, because the lining, the lining will help do that. So just two pieces of, of fabric, the same size, sorry, talking, thinking and hand sewing all at the same time isn't working too well. Um, I'll have one more stitch there. Pull it a little bit, so I don't want to make it pucker up, but we'll have just a bit of a gather there. Knot it a bit too much, and then fold that edge over. And press. And it just wants to fold over along the line that you've stitched. You can always take that out again afterwards if you see it. And you go. Right, so let's have that back in the pin cushion before we lose it. And then I would carry on folding under an ironing before I put this on the apron along the side. And this side, and then I'd fold over the top of the pocket twice by about half an inch. So I'm rushing this now, aren't I? Never get a chance to finish it. We need longer days. <laughs> oh, that went down well. So I would top stitch across here before I put the pocket on. Then pocket goes on the front of here. Measure and mark it to make sure it's in the center and top stitch all the way around the bottom there. Make sure you back tack or reverse stitch at the top to make the pocket nice and secure. These pleats carry on all the way around. And then for the waistband, I'd do it a little bit like bias binding. So I'd cut a strip maybe four inches wide, so twice the width of this. Um, sew it on right sides together with the side bits extending to the length that you want that tie to be and then wrap that over, hem underneath there, and then sew, top stitch all the way across. So you've got a really nice, neat um, waistband that then goes into the waist tie at the side there as well. So I hope that's given you an idea, a little bit of inspiration for something to do with your cow fabric if you weren't sure what to do with it. I might even get to finish that at some point. I say that every week, but I probably won't. So again, have a look on the website for um, the different colours. Still got all that left, look. Um, for all of the different colours, and that, all the different colours that are available. And don't forget, we do have the matching actual panels to make the um, uh, oven gloves tea cosy and matte. There's only so long you can spend trying to fold something perfectly, isn't it, before you just give up. <laughs> Um, oh, now then, something else that we brought you previously that has been really popular is the slash cutter. Now then, with this, it's a whole bundle so that you can make this. 
So you've actually got three panels with the peonies on it. Um, if you wanted to make that go a little bit, because instead of me saying buy two, then you can make two cushions. What I'd really do is to, you could make three from it. Um, so although we've used all three panels to make one cushion cover, um, you could actually use one panel and then some fabric of your own behind it. Maybe a pink. And then you'll need some white fabric as well. That's included in your bundle. You get an ivory with this one um, for your backing fabric. So basically what you're going to do is to layer up the, the four layers that you're going to use. So one plain backing fabric, which is right at the back of there. Um, and then your three um, coloured fabrics on the top. So again, this could be one of these or all three of them. That's up to you. If you wanted to stretch it a bit further, you can. Then you're going to measure and mark at half inch intervals all the way across diagonally. Diagonally is important because if you start cutting on the warp or the weft, your fabric will really fray and, and it'll spoil it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. If you cut on a diagonal, you're cutting on a bias. Bias fabric doesn't fray, but when you scrub it, and I actually used a scrubbing brush on this, it, it goes fluffy. So you get this fake chenille kind of look. So you're going to do all of this, sew all in rows, and then you can do this with a pair of scissors and it will take you an age. But with your, um, your slash cutter, you can simply slip the blade underneath the top three layers, not through the bottom one, and cut all the way across. Now this isn't a rotary cutter, that blade doesn't turn around. So eventually it will blunt because you're cutting across the same piece all at the same time. Um, so in which case you just turn the dial in the, in the centre and it moves the blade around to the next point which is sharp and you've got eight points on there that you can use so it's going to last you a long time. So the large bit here is to slip in between the two pieces of fabric. It also comes with a shorter blade which is intended to go around curves so you can create some nice wavy lines with that as well. So slash cutter creates this kind of look. It, it has no other purpose so I don't think all that I'll use that as a rotary cutter when I'm not making a slashed or a fake, a fake chenille type of cushion cover or a bag whatever you want to make it is just for, for that technique. Um, but that's it and that's the that's a big cushion as well. Um, that's the shorter guide. It's not another blade, it's the shorter guide that comes inside there as well. So you can make the two different techniques. But have a play with it, it's loads of fun. And you can't actually get to the blade. Well, you could if you tried really hard. So it's, um, it's a relatively safe way of, um, of cutting your fabric as well. But it's, it's accuracy, which is what I like about it. It's not anywhere near as time consuming as cutting with scissors. And I've done both ways, believe me, that takes a long time. So that is £14.99. Another favourite of mine and of yours is your 505 spray. 505 is a temporary repositionable fabric adhesive. So if you are um, using applique, if you're quilting, you can actually hold all of your quilt sandwich together using 505 spray. It's not going to affect your fabric, it's not going to stain your fabric, it's not going to remain sticky. Um, it lasts for five or six hours and then the stickiness will disappear and any residue that you have will be washed out. Um, so if you're quilting particularly and you don't want to use your bent safety pins and hand tacking can be I don't know, quite relaxing, I suppose, but it's very time consuming. And then you've got to take the tacking stitches out afterwards. Use your spray. Um, most of you as quilters will spray onto your wadding and then put the fabric either side. I don't think it makes any difference. But what I use this for a lot, I, I tend to run out of H H640, the fusible fleece, because I use so much of it. Um, so I'll use wadding instead. But I do like, if I'm bag making, to, um, to stick the wadding to the fabric, so I'll use this instead. So for the duration that you're making it, it holds it together. Obviously wadding's going to be sewn into seams anyway, so it doesn't really matter when the tackiness wears away for this. And it's not going to gunge up your needle, either your hand needle or your sewing machine either. Um, you can even use it for English paper piecing to wrap your pieces around the, the card if you like. And that is only £7.99. Oh, I haven't seen that one. We've got 404 here. If you have a look on the website, see this is what happens on a Sunday, there's no staff in. They forget to take down special offers. We had an early bird, apparently, 
if you type in 505 spray into the search bar at the top, oh, what's going to happen? What happened? Oh, oh, look. No. Right. So that's a three pound saving. It gives you 505 and 404. Somebody forgot to take that off, didn't they? Mm. What else is on there? Oh, have a look. Oh, type in 570 as well. The, oh, back in stock today. Oh, that's the one I'm thinking of getting, Kimberly, my daughter. Oh, I'm glad we've got that. So it is back in stock. With a new bun. Oh. Apparently, we we had a bit of a battle with um, with Elna to get hold of that. It was it was arms up, backs. Poor old Deborah. And I, we won, and and that's the main thing. I'm going to be back again tomorrow. It'd be nice to have you company on a Monday morning, and this is what we'll have for you tomorrow. So we've got Susie John's Fat Quarter Books with Catherine Wright, um, Dress to Impress at nine o'clock in the morning. Catherine's going to be back again at 10 with Creative Grid's Kitty Corner Rule. Oh, I've not seen that one, can't wait to see that. And then at 11 o'clock, there's our back in stock Elna 570. But it's back, it's back in stock. And I shouldn't have said that, should I? And then Half Yard Heaven, which was our eight o'clock show this morning. That's going to be back again at 12 o'clock tomorrow. Right, are we up to date with messages and everything? like to check. I've, I've checked in with everybody before we go. Yeah, thanks, Caroline and Alan and Pat. Thank you to everyone that's messaged in or emailed in. It's been lovely to hear from you today. And wasn't Rachel fantastic? She's going to be back again on the night. No idea what she's doing. But I don't care. We'll have a, we'll have a natter and a giggle anyway. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you again tomorrow morning. Anything that... Um, that takes your fancy and you want to have a look at more details, then take a look on our website, which is sewingstreet.com. Um, you can order that way. Remember, you've got the one PMP of £3.95 all day, and that will go all the way through until midnight tonight. So go and have a peruse on the website. Go and treat yourself. And I'll see you again tomorrow morning at 8. Bye-bye.